this series is intended for mature audiences. We insist you heed the following content warnings before viewing. Horror themes, language, adult themes, and strong violence and gore, including gun violence. Welcome to the Weird West. Let us tell y'all a story. The beginning of the end. Josh Chamberlain and Mina Dublin walk out into the center of the main thoroughfare of St. Louis, the safest city in the West. Uh, Josh, Mina, if you'd like to describe, if you have any notes on what each of you look like while you're walking out into the center of all of the chaos. Doug, would you, would you like to start or shall I? Yeah, start? sure. Um, <clears throat> Josh walks with all the unearned confidence of a rich and successful man who didn't get rich and successful on his own. And uh, he is um, he is dressed well, but not uh, well put together. He's got the money to purchase the things that uh, he thinks are classy, but... Um, you can't hide uh, being a. Uh, uh, you can't hide having no class behind some fancy clothes, and so uh, he's uh, he strolls out into the street uh, like some uh, like some real estate middle manager, and um, uh, surveys it like he owns it, but really he's a little bit terrified of what might be happening. All right. Um, following next to Josh, you will see Mina. Um, she is dressed mostly in black. Um, the first thing you'll notice is she's very striking, um, dark hair, uh, sharp features and cheekbones, bright red lipstick. Um, she's kind of just surveying everything and taking it in, just calculating everything and just seeing what is happening around her everywhere. Um, her her dress, as far as what she's wearing, uh, she just has a, in a somewhat elaborate black lace top. I'm not sure what the technical term of, of that form of dresses, but just a fitted lace uh, top, um, a black lace choker with a green stone in the center, um, and just long black skirts with some black gloves on as well. Um, and she's just walking beside, a pace behind Josh and just taking everything in. All right. So the five of you, six, counting Victoria Glass, stand just out of their sight with partial cover behind a building. They haven't seen you yet, but you've seen and heard them. You also see um, Josh pull out a revolver from his hip and begin to fire at a few of the nearby walking dead. That's the only gunfire that you hear. Their shouts seem to have stopped any of the civil war that was happening inside of the walls. You are all ducked back behind the building currently, kind of standing in a, sort of a little alleyway. You haven't been seen by Josh or Mina, and you have a moment. Jesse. You have come so far, and he is right there. Josh Chamberlain, thoughts are pushing and shoving through your head as you're standing this close to him. 
All you have to do is bring him in. And then maybe, just maybe, everything that has happened to get you here wouldn't be for nothing. A worry tickles the back of your mind as well. You're wondering if Maisie is still okay. If she has time. If Finley and Gideon were even able to see the doctor about an antidote. You look over at Finley. Finley. As insane as things have been since the moment that first dynamite blast went off this morning, you feel an odd sense of calm wash over you. Maybe it's the blood loss, but you look at Victoria Glass standing there with you and you see her eyes widen at the sight of Mina Devlin. And she looks over at you with an excited look. You may not have a stake in this war or whatever the hell is going on here, but you know who you've been writing to, Mina Devlin. And she is standing right there in the middle of the chaos with Josh Chamberlain at her side. Maybe out of everything that has happened, you can at least have some answers. You peek around Luther's shoulder to get another glance at Mina Devlin. Luther, as you stand with your friends behind this building, you feel the heat of the sun sinking into the clothing, burning your skin like the worst sunburn. You feel your hands shake as one of your hands clenches into a fist, teeth twinging with hunger. Hunger that you're not sure how to control, not yet, not really. You're afraid of what will happen when it gets too strong. You've been able to control yourself so far, but you know what happens when gamblers push their luck just a little too far. You've seen it firsthand on occasion. You look over at Willie and Jonah while you think about what to do next. Willie, a moment of realization hits you. It has been go, go, go from the moment you left the town that you grew up in. And now you're here nursing a massive gunshot wound that you've covered with your father's recipe, just thanking him and his memory that it's working well enough to keep you standing and breathing. Your side twinges and stings and you look to the rest of the group as if you know they are what you're here for. You're not here for Josh Chamberlain, you're not here for Mina Devlin, but you know for sure that you are here for the people that you are standing next to. And you look over at Luther and at Jonah. Jonah, your eyes meet Willie's and Luther's and you lean back against the wall of the building to catch your breath. You know in many ways you are not the man that you were back in that two shit town chasing a vampire through the streets in the dead of night. Your mind wanders to all of the innocent people that have lost their lives for this stupid war. This war that you don't quite understand, not yet at least. The innocent people that could still lose their lives if any of you make the wrong decisions. Part of you the selfish part of you that you feel is so disconnected from the, the person that you are now is telling you to just run. Get Willie, get Luther, get whoever the hell else wants to come along and just leave. But then what? You think of all of the innocent people still trapped inside of this burning city and you can't help but think that maybe just maybe you can do something pretty damn good before what could be your final shuffle of the cards in your pocket. Thunder 
rolls in the distance as the storm moves just a little bit closer. Josh and Mina seem to be clearing some of the walking dead and the immediate fighting otherwise seems to have stopped. You stand with each other in this alley and the floor is yours. Okay, what's the play? I mean, Sheriff, that's your guy, isn't it? That's my oh, man. No. You can't, you can't go over there looking like you're looking. Uh, I think, I think I need to try to do something about those burns. Okay. All right. I would like to, <clears throat> I would like to spend three power points to try to try to heal uh, Jesse. Seven. Okay. Um. So you you head over. You're using like that that salve, right? Yes. So I'm looking at him, and I I'm looking down at my salve, and I I don't even know where to start because there's so many burns on his body. So I just I take my fooper out and I load a little bit into the the end of the fooper just to, and I warm it, and then I kind of spray that sucker just like you would put your thumb on the edge of a hose, and I just <laughs> go to town. <laughs> and oh, I said close your eyes. Okay. Your mouth, probably. <laughs> All right. So um, like a almost like a fire excuse me, like a fire extinguisher, just just sprays out, um, covering at least the surface of some of these burns um, that is enough to remove one wound. Okay. That's, that's, that's a good start. Um, Better than 30? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, Jesse, why were you supposed to bring this guy in anyway? So, um, the mayor just sent, showed me the, the wanted sign, but this is the same guy that, sh that was chasing this horrible, horrible monster that was eating the hearts out of people in my town. So it's the same exact guy that was on the wanted poster and that I saw after we beat this monster and, and and the mayor told me that that this is a guy we need to bring in he, he's wanted near near my town and I, i'm gonna do it i gotta do it well i just think maybe we should get some more information i mean that guy we apprehended seemed to, to say that all these people that have been trying to kill us are against them so maybe we gotta play this smart until well, we figure out we but still got the on. one guy on Luther's shoulder, right? Can we wake him up and talk to him? Do, we do we want to try? Guy, and, don't we? Yep. Do we want to try and get some distance first? Because I don't want to, you know, shit on the plan before we've even begun it. But they seem awfully close for any deliberations with uh, uh, prisoners. Great. And uh, I, you see Luther drop the guy and kind of stagger back against whatever walls back here and uh i say uh i'm not i'm not doing so hot it's there's too much sun it's it's like it's it's eating at me i feel Maybe like we ought to get inside then F oh, find yeah. somewhere to hold up uh, can we i don't know can we duck in we might, we might want to keep an eye on them as well i mean they could be out of our it could be out of our sight in a matter of minutes. I... And at this moment as well, as a few of you are looking around for for buildings to head into, most of them are burning. Most of them are crashed inward. Um, at least looking around here, you don't see a safe building to duck into. Is this is this guy still unconscious or is he like still awake? We we knocked Can't him remember. out. He's he's knocked still unconscious. Oh, yeah, I think he yeah. was really Okay. Is he still on your shoulders? 
No, he just dropped them. Okay, I am going to go up to him and just start like kind of like tapping his face a little to get him to wake up. Um, and once I see him starting to wake up, I am going to put a hand over his mouth. I'm going to draw my gun and point it at him. And I'm, I'm going to offer Luther Mashal to drape over him for a little bit more protection from the sun. I'm going to peek the corner and just keep a lookout for our two VIPs in the center of town. I, I want to be listening for anything they're calling out to people because it seems like they're gathering. I also just want to make sure they don't come down this alleyway and kill us all. So sure. that's a prerogative. Um, I'm going to have Willie make a smarts roll. Dude's already dead. <laughs> I got a seven again. Okay. Um, you you drape that over Luther, and Luther already has many layers of clothing covering him. You don't gather that it has to be direct sunlight to hurt him. The the longer that he stands outside during the day the more he is going to suffer. All right. I look in his eyes and I just say, I don't see any place to duck right now, but we, we got to find one. We can't wait anymore. We can't stand here and talk to this guy. I, I'm afraid I might be a, a liability. And I hold up my hands and I show to Jonah, like they're shaking. Like, Jonah, you, you never seen my hands shake like this before. Never in my life, I've never seen him twitch. <laughs> um, Finley, out of all of the chaos that was happening, do you still have the antidote in your hand? Or... I have put it in like a like satchel that I okay. have on me. So okay. it is just tucked in there. Gotcha. Oh, shit. Okay, so they're gaining down the street. We don't have anywhere to hold our heads. We can't wake this guy up. Things being the way they are. What is it we're doing? I got a crazy idea. <laughs> well, you, you've you never had any idea that recognized as sane, so <laughs> why start well, now? I'm not saying we should trust these folk, but it's possible that if we play nice, we could get a place to go. I was thinking the same thing. Maybe I could talk straight out of my ass like I always have my entire life. And I don't, I don't right. know. We don't know and nothing about these too, people. We don't even know if they're together or apart. Who's fighting who? I look at Finley then too, and I, I'm like, Finley, you got an awful funny look on your face. It's like a look I've never seen before. And I, I, it seems like maybe you know something or I don't know. It's, it's like, you got like a goofy look, like a, like a sleepy, dreamy look. <laughs> um, you know, um, that I haven't been entirely honest with all y'all. Um, the truth of the matter is, is that I'm, uh, I am going to pull the letters out and I will just hand them very quietly over to Willie and I will not <sighs> say anything, but I will look at Luther and I'll go, why don't you just snack on this for a little while and I'm just gonna point to the guy and maybe that'll help I, I don't know it I look like down at the letters and I, I, I peek over at the lady and I look down at the letters and I say I don't know a thing about makeup but I do know my chemical compounds and <laughs> I recognize this particular shade of crimson right yes um so I've been sending letters back and forth for a while um, to someone that I didn't know who it was until just recently. Um, and then I'm going to try and take them back from Willie and just be like, I, you, I'm you, i just, let me try talking to her. If we go up there, I, I'm not good at much, but I am good at talking. So just let me try. I, I give them back willingly. With with her? I mean, that is quite the achievement. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're not gonna talk about it. Um do we wanna try and talk to them? I mean, I Jesse, you 
gotta promise that you're not gonna try and just kill this guy outright. No, I, I holster my gun and I'll walk behind her, but I will not. Uh, I will not provoke a fight. Meanwhile, this, sorry. Yeah, at this time, um, I'm gonna have Jesse and Finley both make a smart roll for me. And Luther just goes hog wild on sucking this guy's blood, and it is not pretty. It's like before he seemed pretty cool about it, but he's just tearing into him right now. Oh, okay. I still have a negative two, right? Yes. Do so I, I have a any zero negatives? And a you negative have one. A, you have a negative one. One. Okay. Five. Okay. Got a zero and a negative one. Great. Um, so, oh. so awesome. Finley, there's this moment like you're you're talking about stepping out and just going and then talking to Mina and you see Luther just dive down at this body and it is unlike anything you have ever seen. You just see blood spatter out onto onto into the dust. Um, he's just ripping and tearing. And then there's this moment where you're all just sitting there looking at this. Like you can't look away. It's one of those sites where you're just so shocked and caught off guard that you're just looking. And when he is finished, you see him turn and look up and you get a better look at his face and you see, um, his skin is even paler. You can see veins kind of underneath his eyes and his eyes look even more sunken in. Don't look at me. And I'm gonna cover my face up. We, we need a fix for this fast. We, we gotta find that doctor again or something. He's that, not gonna last. The doctor is gone, but um, I will pull the antidote out that he gave me, but he gave me this before I left. It's supposed to be for, for Maisie, I know, but I don't know if it's gonna work on him, but we could try. There, I don't think what I got can be cured. This you, is my cure. The doctor made it so I don't turn worse. But what, tell me about your friend. She was touched by uh, uh, one of the inflicted. She's close to turning to a zombie. Damn close. We left her uh, tied up in a train station miles from here. You just left her there? Well, you we went to go get the antidote. We didn't intend to, to leave her, but we were going to come back and check on her after the train, but we were... Train we derailed, were planning basically. to jump on the train and and stop it, but it took too long. And by the time we blew it up, we were all ready to St. Louis. That's how we so ended we up here in the first place. That's, that's how the, the the gates broke through. That was us arriving. What what happened to your friends sounds like what happened to me, but with a different sort of creature. Maybe, maybe I can help your friend. I, I'm not doing so good here. Well, I don't mean to put this out loud, but there's no guarantee that she's there. So there. I, she I might be a zombie by the back. time. We gotta go back, but not. I'm degraded not, real fast. Right now. Yeah, but Luther is a known quantity. I'm. I mean, I don't not mean anymore, to be callous, friend. but uh, Jonah. Look, this may be my only hope. I mean, I could go with you, but I don't think I can make it in the sun. If this was night, it might be a different story. I might be able to make a difference with, with their friend, though. What are you suggesting? With that, with that as well, Jesse, you, you recall how much shade the building put off at that at that station at the depot it's a dark place you'd be safe there we you could give her the antidote or see what happens if if the antidote is there are you saying you're leaving again i Luther, just i just you. found you i know jonah, jonah we can get back to him God damn. I, I trusted you when you ran off before so i would trust you if you want to do it again 
Well, I wouldn't characterize it as running off. <laughs> well, you ran, and then you were off, so... I swear to God, Luther, you're gonna make me do this twice? You're gonna make me hunt you down across half the fucking state again? You can watch me turn into one of those things instead. That's what's happening to me right now. We could, we could try them. Look, I don't want to do this. Their friend is probably on the path that I was before. And if there's a hope I can make a difference before I turn into one of those monstrosities, maybe that's better than just burning up here, turning on you. I know. I know. And I know I'm not going to convince you. I never convince you of anything in our goddamn lives, but fate has dealt us a shitty hand. Let's but... cheat at cards. <laughs> look, look, this I'll I'll help this person and you'll get through this and we'll meet up again. When there ain't gonna... zombies and fires and vampires and heart-eating monsters. I'm going to give Luther a big hug, and Willie does not care one tick about all the blood and guts all over him. Well, I, I'm not hugging you, and I'm not saying goodbye, because I'm going to meet you at that stupid fucking station, and you're going to apologize to me for at least three days. I will, my friend. Okay, well. All right, go on. and... Um, with that, you do see you see some horses trying to get out um, closer to the gates. They're just having a hard time figuring out where to leave. You can you can head for one of those if you would like. Well, I would take the vial first. <laughs> you just gonna, leave. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to uh, say goodbye to Luther, and I'm going to say thank you. Uh, this is taking one weight off of my mind. Uh, and now maybe I can focus on another. Oh, Luther, oh. one more thing. Yeah. When we get back to you and I get back to my chemistry kit, I'm going to invent something for your skin that's going to keep that sun away from you. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I will. You're getting the Willie Colstock skin exfoliation routine. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you, kid. Thanks, pal. So yeah, and then I, I head for those horses. All right, um, you watch Luther take this antidote vial and kind of glance back and forth. Um, and he takes off toward, um, toward the gates. You watch him uh, run up, kind of um, do that thing where you're running behind a horse and you just jump up. Uh, and start just kind of guiding it over and around. And you see it jump over some of the debris and you hear the hooves as Luther Richter rides for the train station. God damn, he's cool. Yeah, always has been. Sorry. Oh. But well. I'll make sure you guys get back to him, I promise. It's a big promise. Thank you, Finley. Now, now we got to focus on on the bigger fish. Uh, uh, your beautiful girlfriend and uh, oh, her mustachio gentleman. Definitely not my girlfriend, uh, but I appreciate that. Yeah, um, with that, Victoria's like, okay, <laughs> let's let's hold on a second. <laughs> I don't mean um, to assume. I just you, those letters. You don't usually get lipstick on the on the goodbyes without something happening. <laughs> Do we want to uh, go over there and talk to them? Or are we just going to keep waiting around and hope something else comes around? I think we need to walk out and see I and agree. announce ourselves. All right. What's the play? Do we act like we do know them? Do we know nothing? Do we lead with Finley and the letters? How exactly do we sell ourselves to two well, rail bears? Well, I, I have, there is a 50, there's about a half chance that she does know who I am, and there's about a half chance that she has no idea who I am because um, I 
the letters aren't written under my name, so oh. that's oh. yeah. Oh, that no. does put a wrinkle in it. Yeah. Oh shit! This is as good as any other plan we've ever come up with. You Perfect. know what? Hey, you, we can at least just walk up, and uh, maybe we just leave with the fact that um, we need their help. Amen. Is there a is there a greeting or something in your letters that you always say to each other that <laughs> would let her know right away? Is uh, it, uh, a pet name? Hopefully something appropriate. Maybe a nickname, a pet name. There's not much of that. You, you know, why don't we just walk up and I will just show the letters and we'll just go from there. Sure, sure. We'll get All to right. the pet name later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I will uh, put away my Winchester, I my but I also make sure it's fully loaded. Honey one time. What? <laughs> huh? Called honey somebody honey bridges once? Bridges? I just heard it. Oh. That is <laughs> I heard my daddy say thing. that to someone one time. I don't know if it's romantic. <laughs> it could be nice under the right context. I suppose. <laughs> All right. Um, meanwhile, Josh and Mina, um, most of the infected that have wandered into the walls have been taken care of. Uh, Josh is a very decent shot, um, taking out all of the ones all the way around. And you've started to see some of the remaining Empire Railers and some of the remaining witches are starting to gather, but none of them get too close to you. it's just, and they're, it's not like they're standing in a full circle or anything. They've just kind of started to come up. They're keeping their distance, mostly because they're not sure if the other side is going to attack again or not. And they, they want to make sure they have some sort of cover available to them. So people are still, you can see a lot of people coming up, but none of them are approaching you. They want to remain as close to cover as, um, as they can. And, uh, most any civilians that would have been here, you don't really see any of them. Either they have found a way to escape or they are some of the bodies scattered all over the ground. Um, but then you see uh, five people, one of which Mina recognizes as Victoria Glass. Um, five people round a corner and begin heading in your direction. This Devlin. Um Hello uh, there. I I I I'm I know you, but I am not sure if you know who I am. Um my name's Finley Ladoris. Um you we, but you probably also know me as uh, Augustus Finch. Ah, so you're my correspondence. I see. A right. pleasure to meet you, I suppose. Uh, um, we don't mean any harm. I'm just, I just want answers, and I just want to figure out what the fuck is going on right now. All right. Uh, I would be inclined to have a conversation. Do I have everyone else in this group's assurance that you mean us no harm? Me and my companion here? Absolutely. We don't mean anything towards you or yours. Uh, Personally, I'm just looking for shelter from from the storm that is St. Louis, this total shit show. (laughs) There does seem to be a lot happening around us. And we see... um... Like, how many of the railroad workers are about, and are they within, like, you know, speaking distance? Uh, yeah, there are, there are plenty around. Um, <clears throat> like I said, most of them are still trying to remain behind cover and everything, but you see easily maybe a dozen. All right, whichever one looks the boldest, whichever one looks the least worried about all of this, um, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call him by name because I know him. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, um... <clears throat> Uh, hey Stevens, come here. Round up some boys. Go out there and get rid of any more of these things that's still wandering about. Uh, we don't need no surprises. 
Uh, after we get that taken care of, we still got business to do. So go on now. Um, I'm gonna have you make a notice roll for me. All right. What do I roll for that? Um, that is gonna be, I'll have you do um, two D6s and take the higher. Cool, cool. <laughs> a two. Oh, that's the higher? Yeah. Okay. And a one and a um, two. Yeah, so you, you say that and you don't notice this, but Mina, the railer looks to you for approval. I, she will, um, kind of give, give him a nod, like an understanding, just listen to him. Okay. And it's just the briefest, the eyes just flick to you, you nod, and they say, yes, sir. And they turn around and start gathering people together. Carrie, is that visible to the rest of us? Um, I will have all of you make a notice roll for that. Um, I'm going to give you an extra negative one oh. to this, just because that's not something you would really be looking for, but... That's fair. One. <laughs> <laughs> I got a four. Okay. I got a three. Minus two. I have a... One. I have... <laughs> oh, man. That negative two is killing us. I have a five. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's something that Willie and Jonah kind of pick up on. Yeah. I think I would do like a very like subtle look, quick look into Jonah's eyes just to oh, see. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. And at this point, um, the thunder begins to roll a little bit louder. Um, the skies are beginning to darken, not enough to where uh, it makes anything hard to see or anything like that. And it's definitely not as big of a storm that blew by a couple days ago. Yesterday? Oh, yesterday. Oh, okay. Um, it's not that big of a storm or anything, but you definitely hear, I mean, a good downpour is coming. Can I ask a question about is the because I know that Mina is wearing like a, a a little like rock is it ghost rock I'm asking just for the purposes of um things. yes okay does that mean I it's in, does that mean I have a negative two or a negative one to when I'm in the presence of it, because I know I still have that minor phobia. I'm I'm gonna say. Hmm, that's interesting. I shouldn't have brought it up. I just felt no, like no, I no. It's to... okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. No, I'm gonna say there's no penalty because it's just okay. a, it's, it's just small. so small. Sweet. Um, oh my God. Harry being kind. I know. <laughs> Something <laughs> bad is coming. Less <laughs> big bad going on here. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna say no unless it like for any reason That's starts to glow or anything like worst. that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not worry about the ghost rock. Don't Forget worry the ghost about rock. That's gonna be nothing. Wait till you see about. this. <laughs> I'll say um if it starts to glow or anything, then we might make adjustments to that, but for now, nah. Cool, cool, I'm gonna cool, say cool. that Jesse is deadly staring at Josh, not saying a word, just intensely staring at him the entire time. I think that I'm going to hang back just a second to get in line with Jesse and lean over to whisper into his ear, hey, uh, he's not the one in charge of the operation, it's her. So could be something we could use to our advantage. Something to keep in mind, Cher. And then I'll get back and step with uh, with Willie and the rest. Mina just has kind of like a strained, fake smile on her face, and she's mainly just looking at everyone, but her eyes are fixed mainly on Finley. <laughs> uh, Willie's looking back and forth between the two of them, very. <laughs> <laughs> um, but confused. So, is there somewhere we can go that's not in the middle of? 
the undead and the witches and the railroad workers and whatever the hell else is coming after St. Louis? Well, uh, I look to Josh. Josh, do you have, is there a safe house here that we can go to? Um, he's, um, he's, Josh is staring directly at Jesse, trying to figure out, uh, why this banty boy is looking at him like that. And, um, he, uh, he looks around and whatever building they just came out of, if it's relatively safe, um, he says, um, he, he's still staring at Jesse, but he kind of tosses his head back. Um, and he goes, yeah, I reckon we all go in there. And then he says separately, to Jesse, like quietly as he walks past, um, boy, I don't know what your problem is, but maybe we need to have another conversation on the side. Well, come on, everyone. Before uh, it starts to rain, why don't we head inside and have a conversation? Of course. Uh, uh, thank you both for your honest hospitality. It's something we've purely been lacking since we came into town. Yeah. All right. And, and don't pleasure. mind Jesse. He's just been a little constipated, and he always looks like that when that happens. He got the bad side of a stick of dynamite uh, in about uh, half an hour ago. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry um, to hear that. I would like to put myself between Jesse and Josh if I can, actually. Okay. As as you all turn and walk towards, it looks like a destroyed structure at this point, but um, uh, Josh knows the right people and you have a little bunker hatch underneath that you'll be able to step down into. Can I, can Mina take a look around and see if who, who is outside? Um, is there anybody out, either rail workers, witches? Is there anybody outside of that little place that we're about to go in that's seeing us go down in there? Um, there are, there are still plenty of people around, railers and witches both. Okay. Um, I'm a lot of the railers are kind of moving around to carry out those orders, but, um, the witches still stand and... Okay. Let's take a look at them before we head, head down in the, in the little area. Okay. All right. You head in. Um, all of you file into this room. Is the hatch left open or closed? I have a bit of a problem with confined spaces. If you don't mind, I, I believe I would like to keep that door open. I don't know if that's agreeable to everyone, but it, it would it would help me somewhat. This is a very shocking day. Of course, what whatever the host pre prefers, uh, you're offering the shelter. Oh, we well, abide by you. Oh, thank you, darling. Fresh this air is my would shelter. be good for me too. So, fresh air always helps. But let's head on down. Uh, Joshua stops. Uh, Jesse and I reckon Finley too on the way into the uh, cellar and says, all right, look, you ain't railers, you ain't witches, you ain't them. And he points at one of the dead undead on the ground. He goes, and you ain't with me, so who the hell are you? We are just a couple of people looking just for some answers to whatever is going on right now. You ain't from this town? No. No, oh, sir. Do you know anybody from this town? No, sir. Maybe. I think the three of us gonna stay on guard. And um, and and he stands just outside of the cellar door so that he can hear anything that's going on down there, but so that uh, Mina ain't down there with two extra possible bad guys. Is there a chair around or? Uh... Yeah, you see a little, basically like like a little card table and um, just some some drinks, some shelves with different glasses and uh, whiskeys. Uh, I'll go over to the table and pull up a chair and I wanna put my back to the wall and my face to the door. And I wanna keep my eyes on both Josh I think jo did Josh stop before you guys? Yeah, we should be right or outside the door. Right outside. The okay, door. so you want to go in, grab a chair, and bring it? No, no uh, <laughs> this is before we go in the hatch, right? 
Well, I think he wants you to stay out there. Yeah, I said we were going to stay outside and stand guard. How injured are you? I for, I didn't. I, I haven't even asked that. Uh, I'm is, pretty is it visible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Appearance-wise, burns like a dynamite blast. Oh, off super okay, close. okay. Well, then he sees he sees Jesse move toward the door. Realizes it's just mean as hell to ask this blowed up kid to sit outside. And um, but he does grab Finley by the by the shirt, like shirt sleeve, <laughs> as he's walking past. Can I help you, sir? Yeah, you're going to stay out here with me. Well, um, I did want to talk to Mr. Devlin, so... Um, yeah, you can talk to Miss Devlin in a minute. You're going to stay out here with me. All right. Very well. So do I hear that or not? As you're going down the stairs, yeah, probably. So, question... We walk in the door and it go, immediately goes down the hatch? Yes. Like there's yeah, it's nothing like, else? It's, it's rubble mm-hmm. on top. So you're kind of just walking up, there's a hatch and you can go downstairs. The actual building that this was built under is destroyed. Is pretty, okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna look over to Mina having seen this and I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm not sure I feel too comfortable uh, leaving them outside with him. I wanna keep eyes on, on, on Josh anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm going to make sure that I I won't go down the hatch and I'll be like, I'll stay out here with you. I just am looking at me and I say, are, are they going to be safe out there? Because I know he, he is a little gruff. I assure you, he is all bark and no bite. He'll be fine. As long as your friend is kind and doesn't mean us any harm. I know Josh does have an itchy trigger finger if somebody means to do me harm. So as long as we're pleasant and everything's fine, there shouldn't be an issue. Oh, most assuredly we're pleasant. Uh, We're the most pleasant bunch you could ever hope for. In fact, the only unpleasant one just left, so (laughs) you're in perfect company. But I do have to stress that, well, Finley is the only one with a true connection here, and I know they had some questions for you personally. Is there any way... We could get them in the room, uh, even if it means me taking their place and entertaining Sir Josh. I am more than welcome. I could show him a few card tricks, show him some street magic I learned as a kid, whatever it is that makes that man smile, because he looks like the type that needs a smile. Josh, like, like just comes stomping back down the door. It's like, God damn it, if we're going to make that big of a deal about it, just c- just come on in. And, oh. uh, and and he, and he sits down at one of the tables. You are a gracious host indeed. Thank mm. you so much, Josh. I appreciate that. Yes, we're all friends here, as long as, you know, everything stays civil. I find no reason we can't just have a conversation, see uh, where it, it leads. Josh, if you like, we could do away with, uh, you, you, you could go away with patting us down and, and taking any security measure you need. This is, of course, just a conversation. He says, all right, I'm going to start over again then. You ain't with me, and you ain't with her, and you ain't from town. Who the hell are you, and why are you here? Well, I can answer for myself and just say that um, I'm here for her, and I'm going to point to Mina. And what exactly can I help you with, darling? Um, I want answers as to why it is that how I randomly stumbled across um, a woman that I had started talking to in letters, and it turns out that she is someone who can stop the witches and the railroaders and is working with Mr. Chamberlain and just so happens to be here at the same time that St. Louis is going to shit. And how did you come to that understanding exactly? Well, I'm smart and I figured out that it was you writing the letters and I've also been through hell and back and came here to find you and uh, well, that's that. And just a side note, Victoria is just nodding mm-hmm. the whole time yeah, at so this, I, like right behind Finley's shoulder, like just just nodding matter of factly, oh, like mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. she's down here with us then. Damn. So as as far as I can tell, 
You are taking this individual's word, and she'll nod it, Victoria, over a person you've never met before. That's fine. I understand it seems you have a relationship, but you're making an assumption that I am doing whatever she says that I did. I just need to know exactly what you're accusing me of. I will pull out my own letters and I will also pull out the letter that she left um, that I took off of Maisie and I will just slide it across the table. Okay, so Mina, you are looking at a letter um, that I am going to message you the letter. Okay. Oh. Oh. Secret messages. Oh. This has got it all. This finale's got it all. <laughs> it's got it all. <laughs> <laughs> what will we Probably learn next? Suspense. Secret messages. Still sweaty. Still sweaty. I know. I'm sweating so badly right now. <laughs> Gosh. All right. Let's see what this letter says. I, I just. I just want to fix my glasses. That- <laughs> Accusation is such a strong word. I don't mean to say that any of us are accusing anybody of anything. I, we... I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just stating what I feel is happening at the moment. And I just want an answer to whether or not what I think is happening is happening. This because... is a fact gathering mission. This is more information than anything else. Right. Many of because... us didn't even come here for that purpose. Right, right. They just sort of. Are here for yes, I just have, I have a bit of a sore spot with reporters and them stating things as facts when they may not, in fact, be all the way true or at least completely true. And at that point, Victoria's like, well, if you would sit down for an interview. Listen, Darling, I've said no to that many times and I don't plan on being interviewed by you today. You're lucky that I'm not making you wait outside. She, she like goes to say something and then just stops. I will Good just luck like with try that. and like grab her hand and just like. Okay, so we'll, yeah, we'll say she goes to say something and then you grab her hand and she, her jaw just clenches and she Very doesn't good. say anything. Precisely. Uh, did it come through yet, Kim? I just. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Odd weather for St. Louis, huh? Uh, and that note is, it is partially burned. We're like, like just, just that corner head. of it is not this burned. This is the, some of that old Jonah <laughs> rearing his head. <laughs> <sighs> well, hmm. That's an interesting thing. And where did you get, this was, and this was the letter to, Augustus, this was a letter to Augustus, who I assumed was Augustus? Not this one. Okay. Well, uh, and how did you actually, it was, uh, in a pile of burnt up rubble, looked like it had been intentionally burned. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently not enough as it says burn after reading. Hmm. It's interesting. Did you write it or? And what are you going to do if I did? I. I just want to know. I and why is that, Devlin? Because when my heart is being played with, I'm not exactly very happy with uh, someone lying to me the entire time. Uh, Mina looks over at Josh just to get a read of his face. What does he look like right now? He's looking at Finley, going, "We got to go back outside." <laughs> no, sir. We don't. I'm not trying to be hostile in any way. I'm just saying what I feel. Unless you, you also haven't told Mr. Chamberlain what's happening. You know how matters of the heart can be. When romance is involved, people get heated. It's high emotion. I'll Josh just, say just for Jonah glares and at I, me. Sorry. I'll say for, for Jonah and I that we came here incidentally our friend had gotten bit by a vampire and we heard there was a doctor here that could help him. And we lost track of him along the way, but uh, made it here only to have 
to find out that someone was trying to blow it up and other people were trying to kill us almost at every turn. So we're just trying to figure out why that is and if there's anything we can we can do. I personally am not accusing y'all of anything. And it should be mentioned that they have nothing to do with this. We met and they are very kind folk and we've been just trying to get by in St. Louis together. You know, it's better in packs, I suppose. We, we just want to help St. Louis. I, I mean, I mean that's the crux of it all. I, I mean, we came here on a friend's whim. He sadly passed away, and now we're trying to pick up the pieces in a city that is clearly broken. <sighs> Mia looks down at the letter. <sighs> so this is how it comes undone. Because somebody didn't burn the fucking letter. I'm going to give a look to Jesse uh, that just says we better be ready. <laughs> Jesse slides his hand uh, nonchalantly to his hip. Now, well, now, now. I think everyone just needs to remain calm. We're still just having a conversation. Right. Right. What do you mean comes undone exactly? You know, there's something that I've always believed, and maybe I'm just, I don't know, wouldn't call it old fashioned, I guess. I just believe that some people are born to crawl, and some people are born to walk tall. And I'm the latter. And as far as I'm concerned, Everyone else is the, the former. And if I need to do what I need to do to get to what I need to get to, then so be it. I believe that some of you have an understanding about what's going on and there are some things that may still come to pass here and now, but that is all going to depend on how you decide and how you react in the next few minutes and whether you want to walk out of here or you want to be carried out in a box. But I, Josh, ask I don't know what most of what they're talking about. All I can tell you is that after, after Miles, I thought I would never love again. But I believe that me and you can make something together. And I think that we can get through this little bump in the road. If you just have a little faith in me, I promise. And we can talk about all this ugliness when this is over, but I'm not, I'm not comfortable with some of the things that are are being said to me right now i'm a little i'm a little on edge and i don't like this reporter and i frankly am not pleased that she's here with y'all right now that makes me not want to speak to you very much at all but again i gave you the benefit of the doubt but i'm not sure we'll see what happens i need you to all Keep your hands out of your pockets, though. Very good. Would you be willing to tell us what, what it is that this is? What it is that you want? Darling, I want everything. I want this town, I want the next town. I want to just do things my way. And I mean, I don't know how much more there is to say, but I just think sometimes sacrifices have to be made. And I do apologize if any of your friends were harmed in this. That was never my intention. Collateral damage is what it is. 
We've all suffered. I've lost things. I lost a husband. But I think that there's always a chance to pick up the pieces and start again. But I would recommend for all of you that this is not the town for that, for any of you. And I will give you a chance to just walk out of here. Just leave. Victoria, you're gonna stay. You're gonna stay with me and we're gonna talk a little bit more. But the rest of you, if you would like, you can leave your weapons on the table and you can walk on out of here. What is Josh's reaction to all of this? Um, <clears throat> Josh just planning on double crossing her at some point anyway. So it only makes sense. And there's a certain amount of sort of sick justice to it. Uh, uh, and um, he's not hurt so much as uh, just sort of sort of disappointed that she got there first uh and and here in front of all these people and perhaps the worst of it is that uh he didn't even get to do the ribbon cutting for the for the for the railroad opening celebration and that to josh chamberlain so he God looks tragic he looks more disappointed than anything right now. Yeah, just this look yeah. Of it's just everything's just. Oh man, I guess I'll, I guess I'll, reckon I'll go kill some more zombies. Just. <laughs> all right. So all of you watch as, as Mina is giving this speech. So when you walk down here, Josh Chamberlain's energy was here. Mina's energy was here, for you especially as you're, you know, trying to size up who the bigger threat is. And the more Mina talks, the more you realize the shift. And now you sit here as her speech finishes. What would you like to do? Yes. So, so St. Louis was a, a business venture? This is the expansion of your empire? In a way, yes. I have many means of expanding. I guess you can call it my empire. I hope it grows. But yes, in a way. That's incredible. And once you have St. Louis and a dozen other places, what exactly are you planning to do with it? Well, I guess whatever I want. I warn you. The more questions I answer, the less likely you are going to walk out of here. So, well, if how much do you really want to know? Staying, then there is no way in hell that I am walking out of here. So, why do you have allegiance to her? <laughs> because I care for her and because she is doing the right thing. Rewriting her letters too. It's funny, actually, I really thought for the longest time that the letters that I was getting were from her. <gasps> so really, I guess I wasn't really in love with you. I guess I was in love with her the entire time. Uh, Mina's face kind of, her any smile is replaced just by like steel, like a steely anger. Shouldn't have mm. said that. I know. <laughs> well, well, hey, hey, now maybe maybe there's a third option. To all of this, huh? I mean, expanding an empire takes willing folks, don't it? Isn't there some kind of conversation we could have here that doesn't end in whatever it is that Finley would like to happen, whatever it is that we would like to happen? Maybe there is something we can come to an agreement on the table. There's always somebody willing to meet the bet. And your right? name again, darling. Jonah, Jonah Ward. Jonah, are you asking for a job opportunity? Well, sure, sure. I like to hear my options. I like to know that everything is on the table before I pick what I'm betting on. Uh, Carrie, what's the D and D equivalent to an insight check in this game? <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be just make a notice roll. 
Ooh, okay, this is fun. Yeah. Okay. Is and, that smarts? Um, yes, it'll be your smarts. Uh, I believe. Well, you will have a you will yeah, have smarts. a notice skill, but if you don't, oh. you would just use your smarts, yeah. right? So yeah, it would just be your smarts. Um, okay. so Jonah, if this is a success, just any facial expressions, anything like that, that might veer one way or the other. Okay. Um, did you roll That's a one? Did you oh, roll a d six with that as well. Oh, I did not. Ooh, that helps. Don't add them together, but take the higher. Okay, five. Five is a success. So okay. uh, what does she see on your face as you're saying this? Uh, he sees that he's panicked over the implication that Finley's putting on the table, and he's worried that negotiations are about to come to a head too quickly. It's definitely, uh, his face is not giving one answer or the other, but it's definitely given a, a thin layer of panic that's deeply under the very good poker face that is saying, fuck this is happening too quick <laughs> yeah so so it's hard for you to tell um if he's just bullshitting or not because it's it's like he's just trying to calm the situation down a little bit so you're not sure if he's just saying anything to do that or if he's actually willing to make this sort of deal well if nothing else Joni, you are a smooth talker and i always appreciate that we'll we'll see what happens i guess in the next yeah. few minutes yeah, I, I mean, anything could happen at this table. I, I mean, I don't even know what you intend with your fellow rail baron here, but if, if you are looking for employment or if things are up in the air for everyone at this table, then I just want you to know that my options are open suddenly in the town of St. Louis. Well, thank you for being so honest with me. And I will make a pointed look at, uh, uh, at our fellow rail baron that is not uh, the lovely Miss Devlin. Uh, when I make that pointed statement. It's definitely a sort of uh, subtle barb at the fact that she's dumping them here at the table. Uh, I, I, I'm not necessarily dumping, I'm not necessarily dumping Josh. I'm giving him the chance, I'm, I'm, I'm giving him kind of the facts. I'm, I'm giving him a little bit of the truth that I haven't maybe before. It's the ball's kind of in Josh's court. At this Jonah point. is definitely trying to bullshit it to make it sound like you are getting rid of everybody. <laughs> like, he, it is definitely, he says it in such a way that, like, well, we're all getting out of here, you know, uh, under your purview and everything. But I, I totally, I get you. Yeah. Josh is thinking about how he has spent the last number of years trying to make this big play and uh, uh, it going sideways sometimes and it working a little bit sometimes. And, uh, he's put a, a lot of himself into this and Josh ain't a great guy, but he ain't a bad guy. Uh, and uh, he's he's put a whole ton of himself into this into this deal uh, only to find out at every turn that he's in some, some deeper shit than he thought he was in. And now here in this cellar, he is in the deepest shit of it all. And uh, he looks around. And um, he, he stands up. And he clears his throat. He looks around, finds a bottle of whiskey on one of the, on one of the shelves. Uh, pulls the cork, raises it, says, good day to you all. And um, and turns around and leaves. And as far as as far as I'm concerned, uh, Josh is going to find Stevens and whomever the railroaders that were cleaning up the town. Uh, and um, Josh no longer has ambition. Josh is going to go do this thing that's very utilitarian and um, sweep the town for, for gross things and kill them. Okay, and I'd be so, happy to. And Steven was the one that I will he say, spoke to. Hold on, hold to, on, hold on, hold okay. on, hold on, Doc. Um, I will say uh, as um, Josh Chamberlain is walking up the stairs, what does Jesse do? Hmm. He gets up. He doesn't go immediately, but he's, he's gonna tail Josh Chamberlain. All right, so Josh, 
you step out of this uh, bunker, uh, you notice it is raining now. It's just that smell of rain. It's not like a storm or anything, but there are. It's it's raining fairly heavily. As you're stepping out, you're looking around. Um, you don't see any of your railers around, but you see quite a few of the witches just sitting around this opening, just waiting. And um, as you step out, you kind of glance to them, and there's this moment. You've been in duels before. You know the feeling of who's going to pull the trigger first. So you walk out, and you're glancing at the witches, and you get the feeling they're, they're not, they're not going to attack without orders. So Mina, continue. Mina is still sitting at the table, just staring at the rest. She watched okay. Jesse leave. She watched Josh leave, but she calls once they get to the top of the steps. And she calls out and she just says, I don't believe I gave either of you permission to walk out of here. Okay, so before that voice comes out, um, yeah, uh, uh, Josh walks out. You make it a few steps and then Jesse comes out right behind. Um, is there anything said before Mina's voice comes I do. out of the... I said, I'm going to turn to Josh and say, while everybody was making story time in there, nobody heard my story. I'm a um, nobody. I'm a nobody, Josh. I'm a young man who was tasked with bringing you in. So I'm, I'm being patient and I'm waiting for my time. You were on a wanted poster, and I'm just doing what I was told. Josh tips back the whiskey, and uh, and he offers the bottle to Jesse. And uh, as that, as you're holding out the bottle, to Mina's voice comes up, and you just see the witches. They're not getting. It doesn't look like they're ready to fight, but you see them stand and start to disperse around you as if this is as far as you're going. Um, you can either stand right here or head back inside, but they're not attacking. They're just standing and watching you. They seem to be just listening to your conversation as Josh holds the whiskey out for Jesse. How many of them are there? Um, th- There's like eight. As he's handing the bottle to Jesse... He just kind of sweeps his eyes around and he goes, you a good shot, boy? I take the bottle of whiskey and I smash it up against the wall. I say, I'm a pretty good shot, yes. <clears throat> Using that as a, that crash of the glass as a distraction, uh, Josh Chamberlain pulls both pistols and shoots at the first two witches. Snap. <laughs> All right. Is that too much? Is that too no. far? Okay. 100% fantastic. Right. Um, I love it. So I will say before too we, far? before we, is that too far? Uh, before we play out that uh, exact scenario, what what is Jesse's reaction to this going to be? As you see... Uh, Josh Chamberlain reach down, pull out both pistols, and begin shooting at these witches. I think I'm going to dive, not back downstairs, but I'm going to dive for cover, uh, some sort of cover, okay. just to just to see it play out. Okay, so are you, with that being said, are you staying out of this encounter, or are you joining in one side or the other? I might join in one side. Uh, but I'm going to dive off to the side to, to get some sort of cover first because I know okay. that's that's the good. All right, so Josh, I'm going to have you make two shooting rolls. Mm-hmm. So you will be rolling a D6 with both of these, and you'll take whichever one is higher. Okay, okay. so I'll do the D12 and the D6? Yes. And then take whichever one's higher? Okay. Yeah, your D6 cool, cool. is basically like your main character. I dig it, sword. I dig it. Um, uh, five and a ten. Five for the first one, ten for the second mm-hmm. one. Awesome. Um, all right. Uh, I gave you damage, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Roll the damage for the first one. All right. Two d six plus one. So that'll be an eight. 
Okay, now roll the damage for the second one, and you get another damage die added onto it. Okay, cool. Ah, sweet. So that's five. All right, so um, that crack of the bottle, you move your hands down so quick to your hips, pull up your guns, fire both rounds at the same time. Uh, you see both of these bullets square and just right in between the eyes. Both of these witches take these shots and just crumble. And at this, every other witch around starts spinning magic in their hands. Um, what is the reaction of everyone downstairs? Um, Hearing this, you hear you heard glass shatter and then gunshots immediately. I think Jonah is in a panic, but he's looking to see Devlin's reaction first. If it is negative towards us, uh, you know, I'm obviously getting my ass out of there taking cover. But if it's salvageable, he's going to stay at the table and wait for instruction. Yeah. And I will say, Mina, I mean, it sounds like orders are being carried out. She hears the gun, she hears the gunfire behind her and she knows that Josh is probably a lost cause. And she'll look at everyone else and she'll just say, now before things get messy, I need you to understand one final thing. You will either join me or you won't. But I promise you that if you do not, I will watch everyone you have ever loved burn. So how's this gonna end? And she'll, can she like charge? Can she like start to manifest yes. some of? Okay. Yes, and as she does, the ghost rock necklace does begin to glow as well. Before we have that play out, we're going to head back up. I'm going to roll some for the witches here. Or actually, no, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to draw some action cards. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. the cards. I like the cards. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to draw for the witches, Josh Chamberlain, and Jesse. Just so Jesse has that moment of, am I stepping in now? All right. So here are the witches. Jack, Josh Chamberlain. Oh. <laughs> Josh Chamberlain has a joker, which means he does not have to go first, but you get to choose where you go. You can interrupt someone else's turn. You can go first and go whenever you'd like. Um, Jesse, that's a five. We need to use a Benny. All right. Now, Carrie, this is a weird point of conjecture, but usually when a player gets a joker, we all get bennies. He's not exactly on <laughs> our <laughs> side, but yeah. I'm going to say not this time. Ah, not this time. It's the finale, Carrie. He's a Caleb's bad guy, like, so we don't uh, get him, right? Uh, bennies? Redraw oh, is... Okay. All right, oh, I'll keep it. Better. I'll keep it. That's fine. All right. Uh, so, Josh, would you like to go first? You see all of the witches charging up, about to sling spells at you. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna, um, let me see here. So, let me ask you just a mechanics thing. I have a parry of seven and a toughness of eight. What does that translate into if I get, you know? So, your parry only matters with melee attacks. Okay. So if they are firing at you with spells, all they have to roll is a four okay. to hit okay. you. Same with shooting. All, right. all you have to meet is a four to hit them. Okay. Um, cool. As for your toughness, that's like your damage threshold. That's uh -huh. how much damage you can take before taking a wound, pretty much. Okay. More or less. So, okay. Um, yeah. Well, in that case, um, I would like to, my, my plan is to shoot my way through this because I feel like it's got like maybe a half circle sort of situation kind of mm -hmm. closing yeah, in towards to the door. Mm -hmm. I want to try to get on the other side of that uh, so that um, if I do get some backup, we have them flanked. Okay. Um, All right. So these first two that you shot were the ones closer to the bunker and then you'll spin around and do you want to fire both guns again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect, perfect. So we're going to roll. That's gonna be a four. 
and that's going to be a 12. And then, um, so the four, the, the first one hits for six points, and the, um, oh, damn. And the next one hits for 13 points. Fantastic. All right, so just like that, half of these witches are gone. Uh, you fire at the first two headshots. You spin around, and as you spin, you actually drop down to one knee and adjust your arms and fire up at the other two. Slams right between the eyes for them, and as they fall, you're standing up, pushing off the dirt to run past. Uh, you, you have created that hole there, and you run past them, and you spin around again. There's two left on each side, and they are turning towards you. They are going to go ahead and sling some spells your direction. What did you say your toughness was? Eight. Okay. All right, so you watch as all four of them turn, spells just building in their hands, and they sling. You watch as the ground kind of like pushes up in certain areas with this just black, almost like uh, almost like crystal looking magic, just building up in a line all the way to you from all four of them. You're able to dodge a couple of them, but two of them do slam into you. You watch one of the crystal lines just kind of grabs onto your foot and you feel it just kind of eating up your leg. Um, one of them, uh, as it comes towards you, it more turns into like a dust and smokes and you, you breathe it in and you're coughing. You are going to take two wounds from this. Um, but since, uh, you are, uh, I don't want to say villains necessarily, but like you God's are- Gods among men, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you do not have any bennies, but I will allow you to make one free soak roll per round. One free so, what roll? Soak, soak roll. So do, did I give you a vigor stat? Mm, I don't think so. Let's Wonderful. See. It's a d6. So, okay. <laughs> um, go ahead and roll 2d6. Take whichever one is higher. Six. Six. Um, roll that again because it explodes. Okay. Five. Okay. Uh, okay. So you don't take any wounds. Um, as this happens, it's, it's climbing up and grabbing onto your leg. And there's a moment where you're, you're breathing in this dust and you're coughing and you just um, like just spit out onto the ground and you kick your leg and just kick the crystals off. And you're just looking over, kind of shrug off all of this and you just look back to these four witches that are left. Jesse, are you doing anything? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on to the next round if you'd like. Um, I think I'm just gonna wait one more round. All right, you're just looking out. You, you're just I'm gonna watching. let these let these witches sort of do my work for me. Okay. Try to be the smart. No, no longer young and dumb. <laughs> I'm gonna play smart and or uh, young and smart this time. All right, all right. So we have the witches. Ooh, I'm going to spend a Benny for that one. Uh, but to keep the cards straight, here is Josh. It's a 10. Jesse. It's a 4. I'm okay with that. All right. Uh, which is redraw. Also a 10. a 10. So it is, for some reason, reverse alphabetical order. So the witches would technically go first. But because I like it better, we're going to go at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to roll some spells. You're going to roll some shooting. Yeah, uh, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay, both of those hit. Okay, roll that damage. Uh-huh. Seven and ten. Ooh. All right. So at the same time, these more bullets just fire off as these spells are thrust forward again. These seem to be more of like force, like blast waves towards you. They're slamming into you. You're stumbling backwards. Go ahead and make another vigor roll for me. 2d6, take the higher. Three. Three, all right. So as these are slamming into you, uh, it is just too much for your body to take. You are gonna take one wound. 
So that is gonna put you at a negative one penalty for next time. You take this one wound, you feel your, your flesh just rip open on your shoulder from one of these blasts, blood starting to soak into your clothes. But both of these shots that you fired off, um, down two more witches. Uh, and that is your turn. Jesse, are you going? Yes. I think he's gonna come out from behind and take his Bowie knife and just walk up behind him and stab him. Why? Point of point of note here. I believe Josh is currently facing. Yeah. So is he? Yeah, yeah. Currently facing the uh, the bunker door. You've got two witches that are facing away from you currently, looking at Josh. Then I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna pull. Right. I'm gonna come around the door and fan like a couple a shot. All right. Make a shooting roll. Ooh, oh boy. Oh no, dice down, dice down. <laughs> Six. Full damage? Uh, so it's 2d6. Eight damage. That is your threshold, correct? Yes. All right, so that um, you you feel a bullet graze past your arm, like your shoulder right here. Just graze past, just kind of slices skin. Um, hits you, hurts, but um, it's not going to give you a wound penalty. But you do, and your, your, your attention is on these witches, these spells that are being slung, where your guns are now aimed to finish off these final two, and a bullet, a shot rings out, and a bullet slams into your shoulder. And you just kind of look between the two witches and you see Jesse standing there, um, having stepped out of the bunker, firing at you. All right, one more round. We have the witches. It's five. We have Josh. That's a nine. And we have Jesse. With the jo- with a jack. Wait. So, do I take? I have to do a negative one on all of my rolls now. Yes, from Ooh. that one wound that you have. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. All right. Jesse, hmm. you are up first. I'm taking another shot at him. Are you shooting anywhere specific? Uh, I'm I'm shooting right right for. Uh, actually, I'm gonna shoot for his knee. Okay. Uh, I just got a six, so it explodes. Perfect, because you'll eight, have it. Eight with plus my negative two, so it goes down to a six still. So actually, so you have a negative two for your wounds, and you have a negative two for a call oh, shot, right. but that's call still shot, a but four. It's still a four. Yeah. That's still a four, so that still hits. Roll some damage. Uh, eight, nine damage. Okay. Um, so, Josh, you feel a bullet slam into just right below your knee. It takes you down. You actually fall down um, onto your other knee. Uh, Not enough to give you another penalty, but definitely enough to hinder you from running from this. Um, And it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to fire both barrels at Jesse. Um, uh, That's a damn, a six and a one. Okay, uh, the explodes. six is going to... Oh, yeah, no, no. Um, where was the six? Was that on, on my the... On my D12. D12, okay. Yeah. Uh, so roll damage for one of those. Yep, all right. Um, nine. What is your toughness, Jesse? Six. All right, so that is going to give you one wound. Do you want to spend a Benny to soak? Yes. All right, make that bigger roll. What are your bennies like, Jesse? I have two more. So it's a bigger roll? Yes. I'm so nervous. I'm gonna drop them. You got it, you got it. Good vibes, good vibes. <laughs> Like seriously, good vibes, dude. I, I mean, yeah. Doug's pulling for you. Josh, Josh <laughs> for you. Doug's like, get it, boy, get it. We've done it before. Yeah. We can do it again. Do I have to do the soak, or do I? 
I believe so, yes. Yeah. In that case, I didn't make it. It's a three and a one. Oh. All right, so you are going to take that wound. Um, as uh, you see Josh, uh, instead of aiming at these two witches, center them, center both guns, aim them directly at you, fire. One of them does kind of slam into your shoulder, but not enough to hurt you. The other one slams deep into your shoulder on the other side. Uh, you actually stumble backwards a little bit and your foot slips on uh, that first stair. And you actually do that thing where your feet just kind of plinko down the stairs for a moment. You have to hold on to the, uh, toward the actual doorway to steady yourself. Um, but you have taken, you have taken that wound. Um, it is now the witch's turn. Uh, you see them now, uh, they have glanced back. They, they've locked eyes with Jesse. Like you've, they've looked at Jesse and then they look over at Josh and, um, with Josh's leg, the way that it is, they just start walking up. They go up to him and you see um, they're actually going to try to grab your guns and pull them from your hands. So go ahead and make a strength roll for me, Josh. Okay. What's that? Uh, does it be eight? Yeah, I believe that is what we did. Uh, there's gonna be a three. All right. Um, so they do walk up to you, grab onto your hands and yank the guns out of your hands, you see them just toss them away. And then they um, just grab onto your shoulders and they just motion for the bunker entrance. What does Josh do? Josh pulls the Derringer out of his boot and shoots the one that's holding him. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Make a shooting roll. <laughs> Jesus, oh, dude. Man. Nine. <laughs> okay, I, don't even worry about damage. So you, uh, sitting there, both guns pulled out, your hand just goes down to your boot, flings up, and you just fire up, because they're standing like directly over you, just <laughs> you hear the, sh the just splattering of <laughs> brains and blood. Uh, it surprises the other one. Let me see here. It surprises the other one, and you see her actually back up. Her her eyes are wide, and there's this look of just hopelessness on her face. And you see her uh, look to you, glance over to Jesse, who's barely still peeking through that doorway over there, and then she turns around and books it. <laughs> so, uh, Josh standing here or kneeling here with a just busted kneecap and one pretty decent wound to your shoulder jesse you're you're hurt pretty bad you're bleeding heavily from your shoulder you cough and a little bit of blood actually kind of comes up into the back of your throat you see a derringer in josh's hands you still kind of lean up against this wall. The two of you are kind of glancing in each other's direction. What do you do? I think he he'll he'll walk up, knowing he has. It. Question: I would know that that Derringer has another shot in it, right? Probably, yeah. Um, and I will say, as you're walking up to the rain, it's not heavy enough to where you can't like it's not obscuring vision, but the rain is coming down. Your clothes are soaked, the ground is soaked. You just hear the sound of the rain around you as you kind of stumble up out of this bunker. I'm just gonna appeal to him, Josh. I'm gonna appeal to Josh and I'm gonna say, Josh, I have nothing against you. I'm not gonna help you get out of this town unless you're coming with me. If you wanna walk on a busted knee, 
You can come with me. I'm only doing what I was told to do. And I'll point my gun just sort of at him and just say, it's your choice. Does a four hit? Yes, it does. Did you have that negative one penalty? Oh, shit, I sure do. So it's a three, it don't hit. So you bastard. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> this is oh. so stressful. <laughs> All oh right, so God. Jesse, oh. Jesse, you hear the shot, and for a moment you know you're dead. You just know it, and then you realize that it missed. <laughs> and the echo rings in your ear, and you look over. What does Josh's face look like after after that miss? Is uh, just like Josh a... is looking to see if he can reach either of his other pistols after they've been snatched from. Him. All right, I, mean, so I don't you know see... how far away they are. Yeah, you see him immediately glancing over both ways. They're pretty far. The witches flung them with their with that force magic that they had. Uh, I'm so... gonna I'm gonna use my fleet footed edge and run up to him, and and just use my fist and cold cock him. All right, so as you're glancing around, Jesse just sprints towards you. Go ahead and make a fighting roll, Jesse. Yeah, I have a nine for my fighting roll. Do I get to like come back? Uh, not not yet, not yet. Do I just yet, take no. it, okay. Yeah. Uh, three doesn't hit, right? Mm -mm. Yeah, so you rush up. Um, Josh, you're suddenly, you're you're glancing around for your guns and then you realize you look up and this kid's right in front of you and he slams into you. Both of you kind of roll uh, into the, the what is now mud at this point. You're rolling. Um, we'll come back to that. The rest of you. Not us, go back to them. No, go back. <laughs> go back. <laughs> the rest of you. Uh, Mina, you have heard the magic. You've been counting the gunshots. You're pretty sure it's over for your witches up top. Um, you heard all of you just kind of sitting here in this not even, it's not an awkward silence. It is a tense, strained silence as you're just listening to everything that's happening above, you know, just happening in a matter of seconds. And then you hear Jesse say, it is your choice you hear a gunshot, and for a moment, you're not sure who shot, but then you still hear two voices as two bodies collide, uh, but they kind of get too far away to be able to actually hear any of the fighting. What would you like to do? Are they, but they haven't fallen back down into the cellar? No. Okay. Um... Mina's just going to like smoothly stand up, um, her dress kind of sweeping around. And she'll take a few steps back towards the cellar. Her eyes are just fixed on everybody at the table. And she'll kind of just glance behind her and glance back again and just say, well, I guess this is where we part ways for now. She'll look at Jonah. Well, you staying or you coming? I'm gonna uh, share a look with Willie and Finley that definitely uh, is checking in with the other two. Um, before meeting eyes with Devlin. I'm just trying to get a read on these two before I make any sort of decision. I am scared. And I am like, I'm looking at Jonah like, I'm gonna go with you, but I do not like her. <laughs> Finley looks pretty lost at this point and just like sits there in like complete shock and just like very unreadable like 
besides just looking completely lost. Um, and at this point too, uh, Victoria lets go of Finley's hand and Victoria takes a couple steps away, kind of moving over to one of the corners just to have some distance from Finley. And she's just staring you in the eyes, Mina. She's just looking at you. And there is this look of pure determination on her face. And she says, I'm not gonna let you get away with this. Get People away. are gonna know. Get away with what? This, and she points up to the town above you. The collateral damage of a whole fucking town of people. My eyes are still just fixed on Finley. I- I'm waiting, I'm a dog waiting for an order. And while Mina is distracted with this talk with Victoria, I would like to very, like, silently get a piece of ghost rock and put it in my palm. And I'm also surveying the room, looking for ricochet points. Okay. That would potentially intercept with the rock on her neck. Listen, Miss Devlin, if you want me to take this reporter out back <laughs> and do what the witches do, uh, I'm more than welcome. Uh, but I think you and I still have some deliberations after that. Still glancing at Finley. I'm going to need you to do that here and now if you're going to prove your worth. Go on. And I'm going to, you'll see from Mina, it's it's not the rock-like uh, power that you see the other witches. There seems to be just this black kind of swirling force that's starting around her shoulders and it's building around her arms. It's kind of like if someone took a drop of ink and dropped it into a glass of water, just the billowing, swirling waves that are just kind of surrounding her at this time. And she's going to look at Joan and say, well, I'm waiting. It, yeah. Make okay. your move, darling. Okay. Absolutely, Miss Devlin. And Jonah. I'll, I'll, I'll push the chair back and I'll stand up and I'll look at Finley, try to give some air of intimidation to it and then step in front of our reporter. I'm going to take out my cards from inside my uh, uh, my pocket. I'm not wearing my coat anymore. I'm going to shuffle them in my hands. Before I do, uh, it's a calling card of mine before I take a life. I, and I, I gesture, I fan them out to uh, uh, our reporter while still making eye contact with Miss Devlin. Uh, it's almost like a show of strength. He's trying to show his worth uh, in that moment, and he extends them out to her. Um. Just take a car. At this point, Victoria's jaw is clenched and she, are you uh, meeting eyes with her at all or are you staring at me now? I will do half time. So uh, okay. when I'm looking towards Mina, it is definitely with this air of, yeah, this is what you're getting when you buy in on Ward. And to uh, to her, it's it's play along, you know, it's, it's be with us. Okay. Um, you see uh, her eyes have kind of filled with these tears of like uncertainty and she kind of glances over at Finley um, and then she looks and she does that kind of like quick snatch of a card like okay fine Um, and you see her reach out and take one of the cards Uh, go ahead and flip it over and if she does it's that same mirrored reflective surface on the cards that have been with me since I lost uh, uh, my patron Um, and that reflective silver surface takes over as the reflection changes and the card changes to a queen of hearts and Jonah's going to look to Miss Devlin he almost looks confused he's he's, uh, lost for a moment he says you know what that's not your card. It's hers. And I flick it as hard as I fucking can. I bolt down with <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here oh we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, what, what are you casting here? I'm casting bolt with as right. much PowerPoint as I can throw into it, which is six. 
Okay, go uh, ahead and make that spell casting roll. Okay, so I'm gonna make Woo-hoo, three nice. attacks against Devlin. Mm. The first is a nine. That'll do it. The second explodes with a 14. Okay. And the third is a five. All of them will hit. I believe that second one, you get an extra damage die. Woo! Okay. All right. Goodness. Damage on the first. It's going to be uh, 12 points of damage on the first. Seven on the second, so we're at 19. And then this is my uh, extra damage die. Fourteen on top of nineteen is like thirty-two. Okay, that's everything I fucking got too. Before <laughs> anything happens here, uh, Mina, make a vigor roll. Okay, okay, okay. That roll. is a D eight plus a D six. Yes. Well, don't okay. yeah, don't add them together. Just take whichever one is higher. Got it. Okay. okay. And uh, if you get them, if you get the max number on one of them, roll that again, and you'll add that together. Okay. Um, I got a five. Okay. As she, I guess, just gets hit with this force. She saw something in Jonah and she knew he had something. I think she she could tell he might be of use and she was right, he's he's pretty strong. And as she feels this force hit her and just the culmination of everything just going horribly, horribly wrong since she's landed in this town, the the fear it, at first it starts as fear in her face and then it just turns to like an angry resignation of that this is finally it and she would just say to victoria yes i killed i killed him and i would do it again and then she just looks at Jonah and she says, tell Josh, he never meant anything to me. And then she'll just turn yeah. into whatever it makes her look like a gross dead person. <laughs> I and don't know, she explodes, whatever. At that, <laughs> at that too, as she, as she finishes that sentence, all of you actually see uh, like a flicker of light as the thin man appears behind her arms twist, grab her neck, and just snap. Yeah, meanwhile, back in the streets. Willie had okay. this whole, she was doing all these like mental geometry, trying to figure out how to ricochet this ghost rock out of her throuper to hit contact with that rock. She's just like, puts it back in her pack. And she's like, well, I guess I won't be needing that. Yeah, <laughs> as soon as Jonah started making his way over to Victoria, Finley did like pull out their Winchester and just like aimed it at him and then saw what he did and just sits there in complete shock. Yeah, Victoria still has her hand out, like she's holding the card and she's just sitting there, her hand is trembling and you just see like a tear just run down her face. Um, And then she kind of wipes the tear and she just looks up towards the stairway and what what do you guys do? Do you head up or? Everybody okay? We all good? Are you okay? Yeah, shit. Fuck. That was masterful, Jonah. Jeez. Thanks. We gotta get Jesse. We, right. we gotta get the sheriff. All right. All right. You you all head up to see the rain coming down, uh, and you see two figures wrestling in the mud. Um, what is your what? Okay. What is Jesse's intention with this, and what is uh, Josh's intention? Like, are you, at, at, when it comes to, oh, I want to knock him out, I want to escape, I want to um, kill him. Like, what? what is your intention with this fight? Jesse, Jesse would never want to kill him. He just wants to perform the task of bringing him in. So he just wants to incapacitate him to the point where he can bring him back to the mayor and okay. show him that he could complete this task. All right. How many shots I got on that Derringer? Um, I believe you have to reload it now. Okay. How far away are my pistols again? Could I get to them in one move? Um, 
you are wrestling with him, I'll say if you can get away from him, you can get to it. But you'll have to break free first. Okay. Um, I am going to jam my thumb in the hole in his shoulder. Okay. And um, use that hopefully to provide some kind of disadvantage so that I can get away a little bit more easily. All right. Um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have both of you make a fighting roll for me. Zero and a negative one okay. with my wounds. All right. So I will say uh, I'm going to draw action cards for everyone now at this point. Um, with that fighting rule, you will successfully be able to push off of him and run for your gun. But it's going to be a matter of the order that the cards decide it will happen. Right on. All so, right. Uh, as the rest of you are coming up out of this... Um, Bunker, I have Willy. That's a five. I have Finley. That's a queen. Jonah, six. Jesse, nine. And I have Josh Chamberlain, queen. I'm going to throw another Benny. To re-roll mine, to re-pull mine. All right. Your redraw. Ten. A little better. Nothing much. Gary, can we spend bennies to make other people redraw? Like um... Josh Chamberlain, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of fucked, but I mean. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, so... Doug. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean it. <laughs> so. How we've done in the past is typically if I, it, it's done to me. Like if I am playing the enemy, I let everybody spend the Benny for me to redraw for the enemy. You're so right. we don't want to do this to Doug. You're right. Right. This is an actual player. So we'll go ahead and let this one go. Um, so let me see here. Um, it would actually be Finley first. Uh, you both got queens. So you'll be kind of acting on the same turn here. We already know Doug's intention, or uh, Josh's intention. So what does what does Finley do? Coming up, you see Josh and Jesse wrestling. You see Josh shove a thumb into Jesse's wound, push him away, stumble over, and then just you start like, almost like crawling on one leg, kind of dragging one behind going and grabbing onto the revolver on the ground. And as he's spinning back around to aim at Jesse, what do you do? Um, I'm gonna uh, run up the stairs, push past everybody, and I will just aim my Winchester right at um, Josh, and I will just shoot. Okay, make a shooting roll. I'm going to spend a Benny to re-roll that. All right. <laughs> Um, that is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 damage. Um, so that is going to be another wound. Okay. Um, so I will say with this, uh, I'm going to have, because your intention, I'm sure, Josh, was to shoot Jesse, correct? And while this is still your turn, I'm going to have you shoot. Um, but I'm going to give you a negative two penalty to that added on. So with your wounds, that's going to be a negative four to your shooting roll. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. As like the bullet is hitting you at the same time that you're firing, basically. It still is a four. All right. Uh, make a damage roll. <laughs> Ten. <gasps> Ten. <gasps> uh, Jesse, make a bigger roll. Eight. Three is 11, minus my three would be bring me to an eight. So, <laughs> interesting. 
So that was enough to actually get rid of your third wound as well. Soaking that, you can, you, you've just soaked two wounds. So you've soaked the one that you're about to take and your third. So you feel this. So I'm just, back to two wounds? Is that what, you're back is that what to two wounds, <laughs> correct. Okay. Um, as, uh, oh God. so Josh, um, this will be. Fourth on this gun and I fired three on the other. Right, 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 right. Thank you, you're keeping track. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so you feel this bullet, again, slam into, it's so close to your other wound, you just feel so much blood pooling from this part of your shoulder here. But this hit, you everything kind of goes silent for a moment. You no longer hear the, the rain, you no longer hear anything around you, you hear your own heartbeat in your ears for a moment. And there's just this, flash just these just these images just these memories of of Katrina and Reverend Bill and you think of the Bible still sitting in your pocket and you're not fucking dying like this And with that, it is your turn. I am going to pull Reverend Bill's pistol from the other side. And I'm going to aim it at uh, at him. And I said, I don't want to, to do this, but it looks like it's the only way. And I'm going to make a shooting roll and try to shoot him. Okay, because it is Reverend Bill's pistol, you have a plus two to this. <laughs> okay. So you're at a regular roll. A minus two plus two. <laughs> minus two plus two, a regular roll, straight roll here. <sighs> I'm spending my last penny. Eight explodes. Yes. With another seven, so that's a 15. Yes. <gasps> All right, go ahead and roll that damage. Um, and his, I don't know if his was different than mine. Is it still 2d6 plus one? I believe it was the same, yes. Okay. Double sixes, does that <gasps> do something? <laughs> don't even worry about rolling anymore. Actually do it, because I want to see what it is. Just. Yeah. <laughs> God, I feel so bad. <laughs> Another explosion? I don't feel yes. bad at all. Oh, I don't feel bad at all. I have fucked him up, and it's time for the hero to lay 13. with me. Yeah. 13 was the fault. Okay. 13. So as this bullet slams in, you feel you feel it hit. I mean, you've, you've, you've been in plenty of gunfights. You know this was a killing blow. Um, how does this story end for Josh Chamberlain? Fire off one more round. <laughs> at at Jesse? Of course, who else? Okay, I will still give you the negative penalty for this. That's fine. All right, so jo uh, Joshua, he he fires, and 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 when when Jesse seems to get better after the last time he got he got hit, he he looks kind of confused, and as he's and he's, and he's as he's got that look of confusion on his face, the bullet slams into him, and. You don't even see recognition in his eye at all. Just he just falls back, and as he's falling back, he fires. And, um, and that's going to be that negative four. Negative four, mm -hmm. and it misses wildly, and Joshua Chamberlain falls dead in the mud of the street. Uh, the five of you, counting Victoria Glass, stand here as Josh Chamberlain's body falls dead to the ground in the mud. Um, the rain is coming down. It has put out quite a few of the fires at this point. Not the ghost rock fires. Those are going to burn, but they burn a little deeper. Um, so looking around, you're able to see the buildings that possibly are a little safer, a little further into the city. And I'll say for a while, you're all probably just standing in one place in shock, just kind of taking all of this 
in and um after after a little while people begin to emerge from various places um you see any railers that even come by they see josh's body they put up their hands and they leave nobody tries to fight you and eventually you see what whatever citizens have been left in this city some of them start to come out some of them come over to jesse to see if he's okay some of them say how they watch from the top story of this hotel room some of them say how you did the right thing you did the only thing you could do these citizens their homes were attacked their their city was destroyed and you see them all comforting you taking care of you trying to bring you back you see they do collect you and they take you a little deeper into the city where you see there is one uh, saloon that connects to an inn or like a little hotel uh, and you see that it has primarily survived most of the damage you see they have they have wheeled carts and stacked various things around it for cover uh, and you see going inside there are makeshift hospital beds set up in various places. It is where multiple people are being taken care of and whatever sort of resistance there was in the city, this is this is where it its home base was. And people are talking. People are talking to you. People are talking to other people, but you can't really hear them. Too many thoughts. There's too much. There's too much happening. And as much as there's there's so much you want to do right now you you want to go you want to find Gideon's body we'll find Gideon players know he's dead but you know um you want to find Gideon you want to find Archie you want to find Gabriel you want to find Luther you want to go there you want to see if Maisie made it there's so much you want to do but you are so tired you're gonna be no use to anyone in the state that most of you are in right now you hear people saying you should get some rest you should get some rest we have rooms and none of that really sunk in until you start to feel the the pain in in your muscles and the exhaustion in, in your bo- your bones your joints everything they're right, you probably need some sleep. It's raining anyway. You'll be able to get to Luther. You'll be able to find your friends. You you just need to stay one night. You just need to sleep. And in the morning, then you can go. So I will say, um, after receiving proper medical attention. Um, You will all be at zero wounds. Still pretty hurt, but no penalties. Um, And all kind of scattered in your own places just for the time being as you're getting settled here. Uh, Finley. You sit in your room by yourself for a moment trying to steady your shaking hands. You look at the bed, but you don't know if you're gonna get any sleep, even though you're exhausted. And there is a very, very soft knock on your door. Um, I will get up and answer it. You see Victoria Glass standing with two cups. Uh, one is chipped at the handle, and um, you see a bottle of some sort of liquor. Um, the cuts on her forehead and eyebrow are bandaged, and her lip looks bloodied and sore, but she still gives you this 
small, like exhausted smile and looks down at the cups. So it's not tea. And these are quite literally the only two cups in the kitchen that were not destroyed. Um, do you by chance want some company? Um, I'd love it. It's, yeah, come on in. She comes in and pours you both a drink. You see her hands are still shaking too, as she's just, it's been hours since the events, but you're still so wired. Um, she pours you both a drink and she holds hers up like she's gonna make a toast and then just no words come to mind for a moment. And then she decides two endings and new beginnings and just holds out her cup to clink. Cheers to that, I suppose. I'm glad you're all right. I'm sorry about Mina. Uh, I meant what I said down there. Uh, you see, like, her eyes meet something and then just stay there. Like, she's like, um. You don't have to say anything. I just needed you to know. She nods and kind of like regains her personality back for a moment. And she says, I have to ask you a question off the record, of course. Right. Tomorrow, when the sun comes up, we're all gonna go our separate ways and do our own separate things. And I just, well, some of us don't don't have to go separate ways if our intentions align. So I guess what I'm asking, and, and she looks at you and you watch her confidence just slowly fade. You watch her sentence change to something else. Like you're very aware that this is not what she was going to say. It's very, very, very obvious. <laughs> Do you wanna write this story together? Like everything that's happened today? Yes, I would be very honored to. For both of whatever it was that you were gonna say for and whatever it is that you just said now. There's this just knowing smile and there's just this mutual knowledge between the two of you, this mutual understanding. And she just nods and she's like, okay. And she takes a sip like it's tea and then just like, oh. I think you're supposed to knock it down, like, <laughs> you know, all at once. Oh, okay. Let's see you do it then. Uh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do it. And she's like, oh, all right. Um, so tell me, how does this evening end for Finley? Um, just, uh, quietly, um, and just in good company. Um, do you try to really sleep at all or are you kind of just sitting and resting? No, nope, just sitting. Yeah, I think that that would be Victoria as well. So it's probably like this, like sitting on the floor, just kind of going like making different notes, telling different stories, just talking and sometimes just sitting in silence. Maybe doze off here and there, but not a full sleep. Um, Jonah and Willie, you currently are still downstairs. You lean against the bar in silence for a little while until you both hear the barkeep sliding both of you over a poor excuse for a glass. Um, uh, could, could you bring us two more? We're expecting uh, fellow heroes at the table. Uh, nods and pushes you a couple more, pushes you the whole bottle too, uh, and says, uh, you look like you two have had a longer day than most of us. I think that uh, is saying something, ain't it? 
Yeah, yeah, but in good company. I have the best partner in the world. Oh, shucks. Um, <laughs> you glance over, uh, your eyes meet for a moment, and for the very first time since the two of you met each other, things are the calmest they've been. Um, Willie, you are in St. Louis. You've never even left your hometown before this, and now you're here. And and Jonah, you you have gotten used to having someone with you, someone by your side after something crazy like this. But it's always been Luther. And so you're you're looking over at Willie, and I mean you're you're so glad that that Luther is okay and that he's safe, <laughs> but you know things are gonna be different from here on out. You're, you're not sure where things are going from here exactly, but both of your eyes meet as you're having these thoughts and um, there is this moment of just comfortable silence. Um, so I, uh, I got you something. I, I hope you don't mind. I mean, we've been traveling for a while together, and I, I, I've come to understand exactly what you like as a person. And well, I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, but I know what the last few days were like. Um, he reaches into his pocket and he shows the uh, ghost rock necklace that he stole off of uh, <laughs> of our rail baron's corpse on the way out of the. Uh, the uh, uh, bunker and slides it across the table. You always love this stuff so much. I thought you, it ought to be in good hands. So Wheelie kind of picks it up and she looks at it for a long time before she says anything. And then she looks up at Jonah and she says, you know, I'm, not romantic. I've never thought about getting married or having a family ever in my life. But when we got on that train back in Little Rock, I felt this intense feeling I'd never had before of what I must imagine love feels like, but instead of for a person, it was for adventure. And there were times when I was scared and I didn't know if we were gonna live or die. And some of us did die. But throughout everything, going on this adventure with you as my partner has felt more right than anything I've ever felt in my life. And I know it feels like we can rest now, but I also know you made a choice back when we jumped off that train, it's gonna come back. And I, I want you to know that this means a lot to me, but I didn't need it to know that I'm coming with you and we're gonna get through the rest of this together. Well, Willie, that means the world to me. I just got to say, we got to work on your delivery a little bit. I was, for about half of that conversation, convinced you were in love with me. <laughs> and, no, sir. I, I'm I mean, not the type. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> uh, I'm perfectly okay with our situation. And I have to say, I I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I, I thought when I first met you, God damn, this woman is going to drive me nuts. And you do, but... <laughs> You have kept me alive and 
God, I never expected this out of a person like you. And I feel foolish for thinking that. You are maybe the best person I know. Well, thank you. I know we started out rough. <laughs> but if, it, if anything, you've taught me that people aren't what they seem to be at first. Even a huckster in a 100% wool suit uh, who isn't always entirely forthright. <laughs> Sometimes you, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I've changed too. I'm not the same person I was. I never will be. I think that's the best thing we could do for each other. Yep. I'm gonna go for a, a quick walk. I owe two people some gifts. You were just All the right. first. I, I, I put my hand out for for a shake. He slaps it away, goes over to the other side and just bear hugs her as big Gaw. as he can. <laughs> Jonah. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning, okay? All right. All right, so um, tell me how this night ends for both Jonah and Willie. Um, if you don't mind, I'll go first. Uh, uh, I go to Finn's room uh, and I shave in a haircut on the door. Excuse me, if you're getting up to some lascivious actions on the other side, I'd last, uh, like at least a warning before I open this door, so. <laughs> you're fine, Jonah. Are you sure? Because I am only comfortable with partial nudity. <laughs> well, the good news is there is no nudity happening in this room at oh, all, so. Those letters have sold a false, false story here. And, and, and I'll enter the room if they're comfortable. Yeah. Uh, Finn, I just wanted to thank you for, for being out there, for helping us, and, and for caring about people. Uh, you were you were so quick to give my friend uh, the cure to the world, cure to your friend, and that means a lot to me. And so, I mean, I think we'll probably run into each other somewhere down the line, but I thought that I'd give you something as a token of gratitude for us not dying, falling out of a window. <laughs> Uh, and he takes out uh, a uh, packet of parchment and a tube of lipstick that he's bought uh, this this night. And he extends it out to them. Uh, I figured you're probably going to be writing a whole new slew of letters. And it's good that you get your shade down now. Oh, yes. I, I appreciate it. I don't know how much this is going to come into use, but um, the, the sentiment is there. It's the sentiment. You, um, you, I will pull Jonah into a hug if yeah, he'll let me. Absolutely. Oh. I was about 10 seconds from killing you down there, but I suppose I should have trusted you from the very beginning, and I apologize for not. You had every right, and if I was in your position, and if Willie was on the other side of that, that gesture, I would have pulled the trigger. So you're a better person than I am. I knew someone like you that I lost recently. And I just want to say you are a very good man. Well, if I can pay a testament in return, I promise you, you haven't lost him. People like me don't die. <laughs> Yeah, we will sure annoy so. beyond the grave, I promise you that much. Well, Mr. Ward, I very much look forward to when that day happens, but I also hope that I will see you around. I, I'm buying drinks in the morning, so. Got it. I'll be there. Perfect. And I'll, I'll leave them to it. Uh, just make sure you practice uh, all safe uh, interactions, okay? Yes, Mr. Ward. Uh, it's a dangerous place, St. Louis. A lot of blood running through this city. You don't want yes. none of that. Okay. Uh, and, and I'll make my way to wherever the sheriff is keeping himself. Okay. Um, before we get to that part, we'll go ahead and... How does Willie's night end? Well, she is um, not going to wait. or She's not going to go to sleep. Um, and she's worried about Jonah. So she's gonna wait until Jonah gets done with his gallivanting 
and comes back to his room and goes to sleep. And then she's going to just creep in and like sleep on the floor next to his bed. Just with like her little hand on, on his boot. Okay. Noted. Just so she knows he's there and that nobody's trying to get him. But she doesn't want him to know because, you know. Perfect. Um, Jesse. You sit alone in your room. And you're thinking of every event that got you to this exact place today. It's just running through your mind. Could any of it have been prevented at all? Was it all entirely out of your control? You're not sure which one is worse. And you look at the blood on your hands underneath your nails that you just couldn't quite scrub away. It's quiet. You have the Reverend's gun sitting on the floor. You have the Reverend's Bible sitting on the floor with that zombie bite just right into it. Is there anything in particular you're doing? Um, I think it's just going to be quiet contemplation. Okay. Uh, I might even pick up the Reverend's Bible and start reading his, you know, uh, sort of pencil-lined passages. Okay. Flipping through it. Um, thinking about the Reverend, of course, and um, he's still not wearing the Sheriff's badge. The Sheriff's badge is there, but there's something about it that doesn't quite feel like he's earned it yet like he hasn't he 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 can't put it on he can't he's so it's with him but it's not um it's not on him at this okay. point all right and after a little while you hear a little knock on your door excuse me lawman yes are you accepting visitors at this hour or is this a little too late for the police Oh, it, uh, police never sleep. I don't know if you, you, you didn't know that. Oh, I've or, never met one. You're the first, honestly. <laughs> Usually they're chasing me out of town. Come on in. Okay, uh, I'll come in. Listen, Jesse, I, 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 I'm sorry I couldn't be up there with you when everything happened. Uh, I, I know it was your trial and your tribulation, and I'm sure you're gonna put on a brave face and say you wanted it that way but i truly am sorry i wasn't up there to uh to watch your back and i wanted to come by and pay that testament i appreciate it jonah but in a weird way i feel like there were other people up there with me people that had my back the entire way. I just didn't know it. Well, you, you did right by all those people. Those that were there and those were, weren't. Even, even the people we go after after this, the, the people we go to help after this, all of them, they owe you a debt for what you did. Well... I don't know if they owe me a debt or anything. I'm just doing the right thing at the right time, or at least what I think is the right thing at the right time. Still learning, as you can tell by my sunburn. <laughs> well, if it's any consolation prize, you are learning a lot quicker than I. Mm. Uh, you're doing well. And, and by the end of it, you might actually be a, well, a good sheriff, which is <laughs> something I've never come into contact with, which is, you should take, take that as a trophy, my friend. I and appreciate. as such, I, I thought that I would uh, give you a little trophy of your own. Uh, I, I don't know if you're wearing the actual thing yet, but, um, and he, he 
tucks into this little needle that he's kept in the the side pocket of his uh, his dress shirt that sort of pierced through. He takes that out, and then a card from his deck um, that shifts into uh, the Jack of Spades. And then he pierces this through uh, and hands it over to you. He says, I figured it could be a loner until you decide the other one looks better. I take it. I say, I appreciate it. Of course, the Jack is the biggest sucker in the deck, but that's the strongest of them all. It's the closest thing I could think for law enforcement. <laughs> that's good. I'll wear it well. I appreciate it. I got one one more thing. Uh, I'm gonna take a walk later tonight, and um, I don't think Willie's gonna go for it. Uh, this idea, but if you could just watch for um, while I sneak away for a couple hours, I'm just gonna have a drink myself, get some get some thoughts in. You think you can do that for me? Look after Willie. Yeah. Absolutely. I would. You have my word. You're a good man, Sheriff. I'll see you in the morning. I will see you in the morning. Perfect. And I'm going to head out, uh, go downstairs, and buy a chair from the bartender. I'll throw as much money as I need to uh, for the chair. Uh, he would probably just say, if you can find one that's pieced together, just take it, I guess. Perfect. I'll take it and I'll start marching out of St. Louis. Okay. Um, well, Willie is probably still downstairs waiting for uh, waiting for you to be in your room to pop in. So Willie would probably see this happening. That's okay. So yeah, Jonah grabs the chair and starts walking out. I'm gonna follow him out and say, Jonah, where are you going? And why do you have a chair? Well, you know where I'm going. I, I can't be in the city when whatever this is happens. So I thought, buy myself a chair, at least be comfortable when I take a walk. Don't you even think about it. I'm what? not letting you, we gotta go get Luther. I'm not letting whatever this thing is come and get you and ruin my dream of a three person adventure and team it's not it's just not gonna happen Willis, you're gonna leave me alone it's happening tonight i can How feel do you it know? well it spoke then we'll to face me it together it took from me and it's coming back to collect and it's gonna be tonight so i'd at least like to have a cushion under my ass when it's taken why don't you lean on your friends who would do anything to help you? Because- we can beat him once, we can beat him again. This is a coffin I dug myself. You can watch plenty, but when the cards are dealt, there's one man who can bet. Unless you want to take my seat, you can see what happened to Mateus that way. Don't you tempt me, I will. You're rotten at cards. You're honest. Well, that's true. And I'm just going to start marching. I'm going to follow him. All right. So the two of you walk through the rain and um, the city has this just eeriness about it anyways. Um, it's empty. It's destroyed. It's dark. And as you make it towards the rubble of the gates, um, the hair on the back of your neck stands up as you just see the thin man on the other side, standing tall and waiting. Yeah, I'm just going to set up my chair in front of him, uh, deal my cards, and or at least get them in my hands and take a seat. Can I see him? You can. Thin man, um, as you set down your chair, you see him take a few steps, just a few steps towards you. 
just to stand with you. His his frame kind of almost blends in with the frame of the doorway of this gate as he's standing there, just kind of fingers on the edge, just peeking around just barely. And he holds out his long, just bony fingers and you see puppet threads just attached to them all. All of them are cut, but you see one of them seems brand new. And as he is moving his fingers, looking at the, the cut threads, he says, I need to start collecting. And he kind of cocks his head looks towards you and he looks longingly at the empty puppet strings and then he looks back at you i do believe we have a game to play one Uh, hand just one one hand high stakes when i win you do some collecting for me in a large smile comes across his face as you see him shuffling his cards. And if you win, which you won't, but if you win, you keep your freedom until you feel the need to gamble again. And don't kid yourself, you will. It's only a matter of time before you gamble with those cards just one more time. And I'll be waiting. So, Jonah Ward, make your gambling roll. <laughs> and I have a minus two to this roll? Um, yes. Yeah, just a two. Nine. And you have card shark, right? Or uh, whatever. Yes. That That gives me the extra card. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm going to. So don't show my cards right now because I was going to do the individual and then show you my hand. If you want to, I'm just going to make my hand. Okay. Holy shit. (laughs) So, I have um, two pair and a joker. What happens is you see the thin man's hand dealt to him. He looks at it and he smiles, just this evil, evil knowing smile, just knowing he has already won. And you see this grin as he looks, his eyes just flick over the cards at you. And as he turns his hand around, Oh, As he turns it towards you, however, you notice something odd. You notice that the Ace of Spades flickers slightly, something weird. And you watch it almost like not lightning, you're not quite sure. Some sort of just energy begins flicking through the Ace of Spades card, and you watch as it disappears from the Thin Man's hand. The Thin Man looks a little bit confused at this, and then you see the Queen of Spades in his hand also starts to shimmer and glow. 
and as this card disappears from his hand, it appears in Willie's. You're holding on to this Queen of Spades, Willie, and as you are, the face of it begins to change. It begins to change into the mirrored surface of all of Jonah's cards. And with that, the thin man only has one pair. And you watch him look down at his cards, look up at you and Willie. And you hear a noise come from him that does not sound like a voice, but you hear him just shout and whisper, cheese. And he looks up at both of you and you see him pull from almost his own flesh to almost like rope-like shadows and he flings them both at you. You have this, this memory of the thread in your chest. You do not want this to touch you. He flings one at Jonah and he flings one at Willie who is holding on to this card. We are going to deal some action cards. We have Willie. Ooh, Jack. This is Jack. Yeah, my it doesn't want to pick up that close for some reason. We have Jonah. Also a Jack. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, and we have the Thin Man. No. Queen of Hearts. That's uh, that's ironic. Can we can we spend a Benny to have have him redraw? Sure. Yeah, I'll totally throw a Benny at that. Yeah, we will do that. That's much better, thank you. All right, so the two of you are up first. You you don't feel better, Jonah. You feel the same, which is good considering how you could feel if you lost that hand. You know you've won, but you just hear the thin man you know, accuse you of cheating. Look at Willie, look at you and he just begins flinging these these puppet-like threads in your direction to latch onto you. What would the two of you like to do? Um, I'm gonna uh, shuffle all those cards back into my hand until I have a full 52 again. Um, I'm gonna run over to Willie fast as I can, throw them at her feet and go, Willie, there's one way you gotta burn the cards. You gotta, you gotta take them out immediately. All right. So I am gonna, the cards are at my feet. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna fire my bolt right at the, at, I'm gonna try to get out of the way of the string and I'm just gonna fire my bolt right at the pile of cards to light them up. Okay. And do, while that's happening, does Jesse do any, or does uh, Jonah do anything else? Uh, I think I'm just running distraction with my star revolver, running the opposite way to keep him away, as far away from uh, Willie as possible. All right, so uh, Willie, go ahead and make your roll for that. Oh, that one exploded. So I got a, I got an eight on my D10, but my six exploded. So I'm just gonna roll that again. Perfect. All right, so here's how this eight. happens. Yes. Okay. As uh, as Jonah runs in front of Willie, throws the cards down, tells you you have to destroy them, and then as Jonah is turning to start to run and act as distraction, both threads slam into his back. You watch the threads kind of come out the other side, knot themselves, and then slam back into his chest as the thin man tries to start 
pulling him backwards. Jonah is pulled off of his feet, slams down onto his back, and the thin man is just beginning to just reel Jonah in. And you just see, he, he's almost like grown in size at this point. And there's just this angry determination on the thin man's face as he is just pulling. You swear you hear him saying, mine, mine, just over and over as he's pulling you closer. Um, and there's a moment, Willie, where your body, like you want to lunge forward and help Jonah, but you trust him completely. And you look down and you just put, the, like, tell me how this bolt looks on these cards. It's just gonna kind of like fly right in the middle of the pile and just light them all. It'll just spread. It's gonna sp like spread like out. Like you're, when you watch dominoes go down, you know, that kind of thing. And there's Perfect. a whole group of them. It's like that. Yes, it's just this swirl of flame as this bolt ignites all of these cards. It takes a moment. Jonah, you are laying on your back. You see the sky above you. A couple rain droplets are still hitting your face at this point as you're being dragged. Is there anything you'd like to do in this moment? I think that Jonah is holding himself entirely limp because he realizes that this is really the biggest gamble, even more so than the card trick of either this works or there's no stopping him. Um, and so he's staring up at the rain and he's just trying to enjoy every drop of it. And he's just trying to stay completely still, completely relaxed and not see him. Just see the stars, the rain, everything that's out. Um, and he's just going to call back at him. You know what? I always hated a sore loser. <laughs> and as you call that, he's taking two more pulls. And there's this moment where, uh, Willie, you watch the cards they're curling from the flames they're they're bending they're it's almost like they're trying to escape the flames you see them curling and like moving and, and almost like crawling in a sense as the flames are burning them up you hear some of them have that, that just like almost high-pitched whistle in places as they're popping and burning and as you're watching them intently making sure none of them get away and as the last card burns into just its blackened ash you look up and the thin man is gone. I run over to Jonah and help him. Oh shit. Oh shit. Man, that's twice we beat the devil, huh? <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying about friends? Yeah, you're not half bad, Willie Colstock. <laughs> you're not half bad. Oh, and I just give her a big hug. All right. Um, and with that, uh, cinematically, we're kind of pulling away from, from St. Louis, looking down at, at this hug and St. Louis is destroyed, but not entirely thanks to the actions of strangers. Most of them strangers to each other not too long ago. This night in St. Louis comes to a close. Luther rides fast out of St. Louis and towards this little railroad station following the tracks. Um, as you are approaching, it is, it is the only building that you can see around you. And as you get up close to it, you see, you see a few horses actually still in the stables here. One is large and it looks injured. The other two are in fine condition. That's what you notice as you're riding up. Um, getting off your horse and kind of looking around, you see a couple of dead bodies laid in the stable as well. And it doesn't look like they were dumped. It looks like they were placed there by someone who cared for them to keep them out of the storm. Um, you see a woman's body also dead outside of the station. And that one was a little more recent. Do you go inside? Um, well, I probably more than dismount I probably kind of slide off the horse because I'm assuming I've been in the sun for a while. So mm -hmm. I'm like really like achy and, and kind of like burden and 
So I'm kind of, you know, it's more of a crawl. Yeah, yeah, yeah like oh, door. like kind of staggering to get into some shade, because um, I definitely would be kind of heading towards, like. I'd be keeping my ears open for noises. Probably, I probably wouldn't even have my pistols out. Like normally I would, but at this stage, it's just like, I don't care. I'm like mm-hmm. on my last legs. I gotta find this person or get undercover. All right, so you painfully kind of crawl over to the door, um, kind of reach up and just takes you a couple tries at the doorknob to finally actually turn it enough to shove the door open with your shoulder and finish um, crawling in. Uh, Once you get inside, you kind of kick the door shut and um, Jesse was right. It's it's very shaded in here. It is very dark. Uh, What windows are there are like covered with like almost, uh, you know, when, Almost like the windows were wet and then sand blew on it. So it's got kind of just speckles of just dirt haven't been cleaned in a while. Um, And a lot of that helps with the shade as well. Um, Looking over, you you do see a a woman tied to the built-in desk here over at the controls. She's kind of slumped in the corner, covered in sweat, blood covering her leg and she's pale. Maisie, you kind of glance over. You see, you see this man in, in nice clothing, although it's very dirty, um, wearing a bandana. And you see two at some points, just from your vision clouding. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? Um, I would kind of like try to shakily reach for, you know, one of my knives that's on my thigh, but it, it wouldn't happen, you know, because I'm so exhausted, could barely move. Um, eyes just kind of closing every now and then. Um, who the hell? are you i put my hands up uh a friend sent me by the name of jesse um and uh finley i believe their name was Mm -hmm. and i got something for you i pull out the the vial they they said this was some sort of medicine supposed to cure you about fucking time. I, I, I've been through a similar situation, so I can understand what you're going through. Now, I don't mean you no harm. Please, my appearance may be a little weird. Just take this. And then, can she move her hands? Or do I have to put it in her mouth? <laughs> One of them, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't have a lot of strength. Like, you wouldn't be able to probably hold a gun with that yeah. weight. But the little vial, yeah, you can you can grab onto that. I say, don't drop this. <laughs> uh, Maisie, she'll <laughs> chuckle a little bit um, and take the vial with, you know, more ease than other things that she's tried to grab at recently. Um, so I just, what, take it like a shot or something? You know, funny enough, I didn't get many instructions with this, so I guess drink it up and let's hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, it's a liquid, so. And then she'll just toss it back, at her head kind of like lolling in the process. And while she's doing that, uh, like, I'm just going to say, like, I have seen the devil too. I I hope you come out ahead of it more than I did because, you know, the the doctor that gave you that medicine, he knows what he's doing, but there may be some side effects. I I can't guarantee that you'll be 100% normal. Well, side effects are better than a fucking monster. I, you, I will agree. You don't look too bad, though. What happened to you? 
Uh, well, you know, stories about vampires, they're oh, true. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of shit out there. Yeah, and uh, I guess I'm one of them now. Not one of the bad ones, I hope. Who's to say what's good or bad anymore? I've seen a lot of things, and I can agree with that. I'm glad you were able to get some kind of help. I hope this helps me, because I am not interested in losing to some fucking ugly thing that bit me. I completely understand. Are you yeah. Are you still tied up? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll take out my knife and just, you know, get your ropes off you. Yeah, so her arm will just kind of <laughs> fall because, you know, by now it's like numb and she can't feel it that much. Uh, thank you. Um, Jesse's a really good one. I'm glad he sent you. Yeah, I don't know how they did. Uh, I kind of had to leave. There was something happening to me. The sun really, really does a number on me. Do you mind if I rest here till nightfall? I I don't mind at all. No, you're you're fine. All right. Do you need any food or anything? Um, water probably. So I would look around for some water if I can find it. Yeah. Um, I would say you could definitely find some in, in some of the uh, satchels on the horses in the little stable area bring that in get her some water um and i will say uh the two of you probably sit together for quite a few hours um as probably oh sorry i was gonna say i probably spend some time singing some songs as long as it was well received yeah (laughs) i want to push it uh yeah no that would that would be allowed um <laughs> she wouldn't roast you for that or anything <laughs> yeah so occasional singing um as the hours are passing you're both beginning to feel a little bit better um luther your skin isn't aching as much as you are spending some hours completely covered um mazy It's like the day you start recovering from a cold Mm. flu, like you know the worst is past you. You still feel awful, but you're like, ah, okay, some, at least a little bit of relief. Mm -hmm. And as the hours continue to pass by, um, some light rainfall outside, pattering on the roof. Um, and the sun goes down. Night arrives, and Maisie, your leg doesn't really hurt anymore. There's this moment where you think that's probably a really bad thing, and you kind of shift your clothes and look down at your leg and you're you're not sure why you can't really explain it but it's like it's like more flesh has kind of grown over the wound and it's not so mangled anymore you find a, a fucking magic man or something? I I tell you what, I broke my arm <laughs> jumping across buildings and I healed almost immediately. So I would say maybe this doctor is magic. I mean, at this point, I'll take anything. I, I'm not one to judge. Do you I- uh, find yourself hankering for the taste of human flesh, perhaps? <laughs> not right now, but, right. uh, you know, if I all, did, not... it wouldn't be the first time. 
I, I'm not good eating, first of all. Let's just put that put that out there. Don't worry. I I don't think I have it in me to stab anybody right now. <laughs> Do you think you're gonna be okay? I I think so. My my leg is growing back and that's not something I ever expected. Well, and you know, I look outside, I see it's night. It's like, well, I, th- I think it's best I'd be getting on. I'd be careful of things that got me really love the nighttime. Uh, but I know you don't <laughs> like the sunlight, so. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that anymore. As long as you're okay, if you think you can make it home or whatever, otherwise I can escort you. Uh, I can do it now. I ain't doing it during the daytime. Well, shit, I don't know where to go. Where are you going? Wherever the winds may blow me. I can just escort you to the nearest town if you'd like. That that would be a good start. Uh, My family... I'm on my own, so... That'd you know be what nice. that's like. Yeah. The two of you, you know, you wake up in the morning, you have drinks with your friends, but your main concern is getting back to Luther. And you drink, you eat what you have, what you can, and then you get packed up and you start heading for that station at the crossroads. And the two of you, you head together. When you arrive, you see the, the few horses in the stables still that were put there, what seems like ages ago. And you walk into this station and um, as you open the door, you, you look in, you, you remember where Maisie was tied up and she's no longer there. You, you don't see anyone actually, there's nobody here. And that's when you notice just the little folded up note stuck to the door. Dear Willie and Jonah, this is the hardest letter I've ever had to write. And I'm sure it won't be a fountain of joy for you to read. I'm sorry for the brevity of this missive. I was never a man of many words. That's a joke. <laughs> it's time for me to say goodbye. Willie, I've only known you for a short time and yet with all that we went through, it feels like we're family. And Jonah, constantly saving your skin, cleaning up your messes. I didn't know it at the time, but those were the best years of my life. With the changes that have come over me, it wouldn't be right for me to bring either of you along on this path that I must travel. In order to forge it, you two are both such stubborn son of a bitches. That's Golly. why we got along. I can't keep both of you in the same place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. I must forge, in order to forge ahead, we must be honest with ourselves and our purpose. My destiny is a lonely one. I'm a creature of the night. The only joys I have left are memories of our time together and the knowledge that you live on. Cherish the feeling of warmth, the warmth of a new sunrise upon your face. Embrace those close to you and be comforted by them. Don't ever take for granted the gift that you've been given. (laughs) While we must part ways, I promise you this, if your need is ever so great, and your despair so deep that all seems hopeless, I won't be far away. I won't be so far away that I cannot hear your call. Your truest friend in life and death, 
Luther Richter. Yeah, well, that just that just about sums it up. That, that's Luther Rick there. You know what, though? I am undeterred. I still think I... I want to work on something. There's, I just have a feeling that we'll be back together with him again someday. Oh, yeah. It can't be the end. Can't be. I mean, Ooh. not when we have science. <laughs> I can come up with something I know I can that can make him presentable. It's just going to be a matter of finding him when we're ready, when he's yeah. ready. If anybody can do it, it'll be you, Willie Colstock. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I know you knew him longer than I did. Are you okay? It hurts. But he was the reason why I changed to begin with, same as you and I changed each other. And I know that if he says that he's going away, that he means it. He was never a man that told lies. That was my department. I just hope that wherever he's going, he's at peace. And I know that eventually you and I will run into him. And none of this means that your dream can't come true. I have never been one for traveling alone. And if he means to run, then maybe we mean to follow. You can't just be taking lonely chairs out into the desert. Oh, you said it. And I, I think so too. He's stubborn just like you were, and he's doing the same thing you would have done if I hadn't followed you that night. So I, I, I think we stay the course. We stay together with the plan of all three of us being together again. And with that, she looks around and notices that Matthias's body is not there. No. Oh. Yeah, um, Matthias's body, um, there are no bodies in here. And um, as you as you leave and kind of turn and look into the stables, it, it looks like the bodies have been placed uh, with care in the stables. You see um, Matthias and you see the, the man that was brought in on the back of Finley's horse. And you see um, Katrina Divine. But no Maisie, right? No Maisie. You think Luther saved that woman? I, th I think he did. Does it, does it look like the rope that was tying her up was like torn through or does it look like someone untied it or cut Looking it? Looking at it, it looks like it was cut with a knife. I think he got her and I think he saved her and, and maybe it's some sort of a half cure like he was but I'd have to think he wouldn't have let her go if he thought she could be danger to other people that's that's good it's good he has somebody as much as he doesn't want to admit it he always needs somebody hyping up all the things that he does it's yeah. it's good he'll have somebody on the road we we, we ought to we ought to give Mateus a, a proper burial, huh? That's what I think. And probably these other two as well. I, I, I'm sure Luther couldn't do it because he couldn't be out in the sun, but we yeah. put him here for a reason. And I think we should lay him to rest proper, like, like you say. Yeah. Let this be the end of this whole rotten business. Well, I would like to pull out a bottle of whiskey that I took from the bar last night and um, two little glasses, fill them up and give one to Jonah, one to myself. I would just like to say, here's to everyone who went on this adventure with us and to those we lost along the way. Amen. Hey, I was I was thinking, not to ruin a good moment, but 
I've been thinking, and you know how I am about my plans. Uh, say, one Jonah Ward and one Willie T. Colstock is, uh, well, well, they're hankering for the next big adventure, huh? Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, there just so happens to be two rail barons who have gone missing, presumed dead in the city of St. Louis, leaving a considerable power vacuum within the structure of the West, I'd say. And uh, uh, they may be looking for some folks to hunt down the rest of those poisoned apples that were working for those two. And, well, that would leave a whole lot of rail open to the West. And a lot of adventure. I, I was thinking maybe you and I look into this business and chase down the stragglers. Well, Jonah Ward, I'd say that sounds like a plan. Luther is the kind of the proverbial cowboy that rides into the sunset, except it's into the the sundown. Um, <laughs> into the moonlight. <laughs> yeah. Where I imagine it would be a situation where Luther would try to isolate, but kind of remain on the outskirts of civilization. And maybe he would be more apt to continue his uh more lawman type things or bounty hunting type things except it's just basically him sucking the blood of bad people as luther would leave Maisie, she would give him a kiss on the cheek and say if you ever need another like uh kind of half dead half alive pal uh i'll try and make sure you always know where to find me i'll keep that in mind I wouldn't be surprised that we meet up again someday. I sure hope so. It'd be nice to be able to see some faces I've seen before. I will say what Maisie would want to do once, you know, she <laughs> literally got back on her feet <laughs> a little bit more would be to kind of take up the model that Katrina had with her and the other girls and take in some girls who came from St. Louis kind of under her wing, um, kind of some of any of them that, you know, felt lost or had lost everything and needed a, a makeshift family or sense of purpose. Maisie would go out of her way to, to find them and, and bring them together. Where does Jesse go from here? What does Jesse do? Take the long way back. He would pass by the crossroad, crossroad station. You heading back, um, kind of heading at that straight path toward the crossroads, but not staying directly on the path. You would find the bodies of Archie and Gabriel. Okay. I would probably do something for each of them as well. Either take care of those bodies as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Because probably I didn't know. Be I didn't know. Like super in depth. Right, right. I wouldn't right. be spending the whole, you know, four or five days doing it, but I would definitely either burn them or, you know, like just give them some sort of proper closure closure yeah yeah at that point and then i think he would continue on because he would definitely want to complete check the box on the the task um i think he would have to tell the mayor that he accomplished what he did i think he's seen too much known too much um but i think he would find a different town maybe to be sheriff in so you turn in that sheriff's badge I, yeah, I'll turn in the one that I had been holding on to from the original sheriff. I'm mm -hmm. going to keep the one that Jonah gave me uh, as I'm sort of tucked into the Bible that the Reverend gave me, of course. Um, okay. And I would just tell him that uh, I don't know where I'm going, but if he should ever need me, he could send word. I'll, I'll send word for where I finally settle down. I feel like this time around, less moving around place to place place kind of saying with Victoria and writing that story 
Um, and, you know, if that means staying in St. Louis, that means helping out in any way that they can um, to kind of get the, the city back in a sort of array. Um, I think um, I see, you know, later on down the line, going and trying to find um, Jonah and Willie and Jesse just to see everyone again. Um, just for just for the sake of knowing that everyone's still alive, you know, that it wasn't all completely just like something that they woke up and it just never happened, you know. Um, and I think I think for them it's eventually, you know, giving up that 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 whole just giving up the whole thing with Augustus Finch and giving up that whole that whole story that they were creating with that and and letting it go because they just can't carry on with that any longer I think um, and instead writing under you know the real name writing under the the name that you know they feel more comfortable with our story ends as victoria glass sits down at her desk a stack of fresh blank paper sits on one side of the typewriter and an empty tray to hold the full pages sits on the other she pulls the first page into position and takes a deep breath adjusting the gold wire rimmed glasses on her nose I still a little blackened from the events of St. Louis. Scratches bandaged on her forehead and the eyebrow. And her tongue kind of runs across her fattened lip uh, as the swelling um, it always gets worse before it gets better. As soon as her finger hits that first key, the clack of the keyboard continues and picks up pace as her confidence grows. Finley moves to sit beside her. And as the words begin to fill the pages, Victoria Glass and Finley Ladoris write the story together. The story of the strangers that changed so many lives, like a ripple effect. Even unknown to them, the story of strangers that due to sick, twists of fate met at the crossroads. Thank you all so much for telling this story with me.
sister. I'm writing to update you on recent progress towards the plan, and I hope this letter finds you well. The St. Louis goal is coming along nicely, and at present, the timeline should remain right on schedule. The Empire Rail Workers, under my control, have loaded the Ghost Rock onto the train, and unless there's some unforeseen circumstance, it should be arriving right as anticipated. It was simpler than I expected, gaining control over these men in Josh's employ, but Josh himself remains a potential issue. I know he never saw us as Romeo and Juliet, but he seems a bit more aloof as of late, even for him. I know some of his men still suspect something, but I've managed to convince Josh to send most of them to St. Louis in advance. It can only help to have more bodies there when the explosion goes off, and more bodies means more servants in the long run. So, all in all, it could be worse. I trust our sisters will gather as many of the town folk towards the platform for when the train arrives. The ghost rock dust can travel a decent distance, as you know, but those in the closest vicinity will be easily overwhelmed and will make our work much easier. Once I arrive, all those infected will be under my control. As always, if anyone resists or becomes suspicious, kill them. Dispose of the bodies, or at least make it look like an accident. And also, keep a lookout for Victoria as well. Frankly, I have tired of our cat and mouse game, so if you see her unaccompanied and the moment is right, eliminate her. And if you can, give her my regards when you do. My only regret is that I won't be there to witness her meet her most deserved and... I should be arriving with Josh within the week. Depending on how everything goes will determine what is to be done with him. But I am in the process of creating documentation that will grant me full control over the Empire Rail Company if something unforeseen should happen to our Mr. Chamberlain. His greatest asset, other than his company, is warming my bed. And once I gain control over Empire, I can easily find another to assist in that regard. Keep faith, my sister. Our time has almost come. We just need to remain vigilant and ready. Soon I will have dominion over everything, and you and all my faithful sisters will join me in making this world our own. Signed, Mina Devlin. You walk down a dimly lit street, getting some air before you dive back into your work. You're alone on the street, at least at first. But as you're approaching the end, you see a figure leaning up against the post, hat pulled down over their eyes. But there's something familiar about them. You can't quite put your finger on it. And then you see the figure glance over in your direction and kind of beckon for you to come closer. Do you go closer? Um, hesitantly, yes. Right. Cautiously move forward and the figure kind of, you know, removes the hat from covering their eyes and you can see them clearer now in the lantern light that is showering down from the street post. Well, that's quite a shy for sure eyes. I didn't know that you were still alive. To be fair, I didn't know that I was still alive. <laughs> what happened afterwards? I don't know anything. I, I don't know what happened after I made the deal. He just said that you're coming with me. And then when I woke up, I was out in the middle of nowhere. So there's, there's just kind of this, you're, you're explaining a little bit, but there's almost just this like zoom out as the two of you are walking toward the place you are working on this story. And the two of you begin to head there together. Yeah.